conference dating back to the early 1950s. 109th meeting all time. They first played in 1888, but when the ACC expanded and went to two separate divisions, these teams were placed in different divisions. They weren't scheduled to play in conference every year. So they decided to schedule a couple of non-conference games to keep the rivalry going more frequently. They played a non-conference game in 2019 as well. North Carolina received the opening kickoff after Wake Forest deferred. It is a touchback, and here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, Wake Forest is the smallest Power 5 school in terms of undergraduate enrollment, but don't underestimate them because of their size. Their wide receiver, Ja'Cory Roberson, told me, we don't want to be known as Little Wake Forest anymore. We feel disrespected. We want the national recognition that this program deserves. He said they're not satisfied with the top 10 ranking. They haven't even discussed it in the locker room. They want much more than that. They want respect and they want to change the trajectory of this program Sean yeah, their motto as you know Molly this year is good to great they've been good they're hoping that this is a breakthrough season here's Ty Chandler the ball came out at the end of the run and Wake Forest believes it has it and the Demon Deacons do Travion Red recovered the fumble on the first play of the game turned over by the transfer from Tennessee Chandler well you can see they are ripping at the ball Ryan Smenda yep. and this is what they do I mean coming into the game one of the things that they have done better than anybody is take the ball away that's the 18th takeaway now for Wake Forest crowd is booing they saw a replay that we saw and they believe that Chandler might have been down certainly they'll take a look at it looks like his knee is actually on uh, the foot of one of his teammates well Justin Olsen They are going to take a look at it. Terrific replay official here today, Peter Voss, former head football coach at Holy Cross. New jerseys are here. While we were away, the referee Jeff Flanagan announced that the play stands. As a fumble, the crowd doesn't like it. Mac Brown, the Carolina coach, didn't like it. So here's Wake Forest from the Tar Heel 38, Christian Beal Smith, part of a three running back rotation, gets three for the Demon Deacons. Let's bring in Matt Austin, our referee. Matt, what do you see? Well, originally I thought that the, the runner's uh, shin was on the ground before the ball started to come out. Again, you can't see the ball. It's hidden by the helmet. So when did it actually start to come out? That was the question. Ruling on the field with stands. Uh, that's what they went with. It wasn't confirmed. Just not enough evidence to overturn it. Sam Hartman on target to Jaquari Roberson. And that's the first down for the high-flying Demon Deacons, averaging more than 43 points per game. Trying to take advantage of the defensive play by Smenda, who ripped the ball out. There's the long mesh, something they're known for. There's Sam Hartman running, flag down. Hartman out of bounds inside the five-yard line. They'll mark it at the three. There's a flag down at the 14-yard line along the near hash marks. Well, that's one of the plays they run where it takes a long time. Defense. The penalty added half of this is to the goal. First down. Holding on. Right now we're seeing Wake Forest take advantage of what they've been doing all year. You, you ask, what have they done to be successful? One of the things Dave Clawson's team has done is take the ball away. Coming into the game, plus 10 in the turnover margin, make that plus 11 right now, and now they're inside the five yard line on their opening possession with the short field. And it's the Wildcat with Christian Beal Smith lined up to take the direct snap. The running back lowers his head, gets to the goal line, but not in to the end zone. Good penetration that time by the defensive front of North Carolina. Wake goes very fast on offense. Beal Smith with a flag down, up and over for a touchdown, but the Official on the near sideline along the line of scrimmage through his flag. Illegal formation. Offense. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty for second down. 
And that's been another key to Wake Forest success under Dave Clawson year in and year out among the least penalized teams in the country. I, th I think the fact, you know, he's got to be up on the line of scrimmage. That's the guy that was not in the right position. Backs Taylor him up. Warren, one of their wide receivers. Deep and talented wide receiver group. They brought 20 starters back from last year's team. They're not surprised by their success. Time for Hartman. Running out of time, and he gets taken down at the nine yard line by Taman Fox. His 25th career sack, third in North Carolina history. Only Greg Ellis and Julius Peppers have more. Well, that's great coverage downfield. You don't have to coverage a lot of distance when you're this close to the red zone, the end zone. Carolina had everybody bottled up. Sam Hartman, nowhere to go with the football. Third and goal from the nine. Hartman throws incomplete, trying to get it to A.T. Perry. Tyler McMichael, the Clemson transfer in coverage. Looked like Hartman might have been hit as he threw. Jay Bateman, the defensive coordinator, said McMichael has to play well. Both our corners have to play well. McMichael did not play a week ago against Notre Dame. It's a good play on third down that time against a bigger receiver in Perry. One of the best kickers in the history of college football, Nick Skiba, has made 89.7% of his kicks in his career. Second all time. And he improves on that percentage. By making a 27-yarder, Brett Baer of Louisiana Lafayette, back in 09 to 2012, made 90% of his kicks. Skiba could be number one all time, and his field goal taking advantage of that play by the defense. Yeah, and you know what? Both teams are happy right now because for Wake Forest, you get on the scoreboard first, game on the road. North Carolina, you have the turnover. Your defense comes out and holds them to a field goal. Me, both sidelines very happy right now with the way that started out. Obviously, North Carolina didn't want the turnover, but the fact that their defense would get a stop and force a field goal because this game last year was 59 53, right? Field goals are not going to win this football game. Since 2018, there are the numbers for Wake Forest. They have scored first in 77% of their games. They get the lead early, only Alabama and Clemson have scored first more often during that span than the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Ivan Moore will kick off for the second time. He's their punter. Morey is Conley back deep. Temperature in the low 50s. Moore kicking into a light breeze. It is returnable again if Conley decides to do it. He'll try it this time after making a fair catch the first time. And it's well covered by Wake at the 21-yard line. Let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by Jared. Well, for Wake Forest, you're going to see this slow mesh action. The quarterback is going to follow the back up close to the line of scrimmage, and it kind of freezes the defense, particularly that middle post defender. They have hit a lot of deep routes off this action. With North Carolina, their screen game, their wide receiver screen game, particularly to Josh Downs, has been incredibly effective this year. Good timing and execution. We'll see both of those actions today. North Carolina running a second play. They turned it over on the first. Chandler had a very nice transition to North Carolina from Tennessee. Runs to the 35 for a 13-yard gain. Yeah, he's been very solid. He's not as flashy as the two guys they had last year that are both in the NFL now, but he's been very dependable. Here he comes again. He will get the bulk of the carries among the running backs. He and Sam Howell, the quarterback, get well more than half of their rushes. Travion Red, the safety, made the tackle. And Carolina going with quick tempo. Three minutes in. They love quarterback draw, and Howell loves to run it. He's across midfield to the Wake 46 with a first down. Yeah, Sam Howe told us that that's the play they worked in the offseason the most, to really get good at it, execute it well, the quarterback draw. And he's such a great north-south vertical runner in terms of breaking tackle. He has had four 100-yard rushing games this season. He throws deep, and a flag thrown. 
It was intended for Antoine Green, Gavin Holmes in coverage. And that's a break for Carolina if it goes against the defense, because that didn't look like it had any chance of being completed, but perhaps it was the holding that yeah. made that the case. Yeah, there was holding well before the ball was close to the receiver. And this is a defense, and Wake Forest that plays a lot of quarters coverage, which is man-to-man -man for those outside guys and their young corners. Gavin yeah, Holmes is a freshman out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Got called for that holding infraction. The defense gives up points. We've given up 24 points per game. Dave Clawson says he cares about red zone defense. He cares about takeaways. We've already seen one and being good on third down. Here comes Howell again. Planted at the 33-yard line, but he turned that into a gain of three. Sam Howell, quarterback keeper. Well, he is tough. You watch the teams. Dave Clawson said admiringly, their quarterback, Sam Howell, plays with a lot of guts. First Carolina quarterback ever to rush for 100 in a season four times. They've had some good running quarterbacks here over the years. You know, Sean, if you take the sack yardage out, I mean, he's rushed for nearly 800 yards, which is, you know, I mean, running backs, you hope running backs run for that many yards. And, and it's not really by, other than the draw, it's not a lot of quarterback design run. A lot of it is just him taking off and scrambling and making plays and running with toughness. He ran for 101 last week in their loss at Notre Dame. They battled the Irish all the way to the end. The Carolina team that's had a disappointing year. But they feel they've played well lately. Howell stayed on his feet, apparently got away from Luigi Villain, and he has a first down. He was everything but down, apparently, for a sack and showing that competitiveness and toughness that we talked about. Well, the coaches at Wake Forest said, we've got to get him on the ground. I mean, that is the key to the game, getting Sam Howell on the ground. Weren't able to do it that time. D.J. Jones in a running back after the 14-yard run by Howell on the first down. You're right, Dave Clawson said to me, the game is, can we tackle yep. Sam Howell? And it usually takes more than one to get him on the ground. He is six feet in a fraction, perhaps, but a very solid 220 pounds. Loves the weight room. They have to kick him out of the weight room. Here he comes on a design run. He lowers his shoulder and scores he just ran over Nick Anderson on his way to the end zone for the seventh time this year it was a great fake I mean he did a great job of selling it drawing the defense in and then here's the power at the end he's not a make you miss guy he's a make you pay guy if you come up to tackle him he is gonna he's gonna put the pain on you he influenced the defensive end the linebacker and then the toughness at the end of the run by Sam Howell. my goodness extra point good by Grayson Atkins Sam Howell now by 21 but Sam Howell led him back for 59 53 victory as he threw for a single game school record 550 yards six touchdowns he also rushed for a TD for good measure highest scoring game in the long history of this rivalry Jonathan Kim is a touchback machine there's a touchback on his first kickoff of this game Sam Howell Already with three rushes of 10 yards or more in this game, now has 35 for the season. That leads the country. Running backs, quarterbacks, it doesn't matter. He has more rushes of 10 or more than anybody. And you know what's amazing is most people, including Mac Brown as head coach, believe that Sam Howell's gonna leave for the NFL at the end of this year. And, but there is no sense of him protecting himself or trying to stay healthy. He's running more and playing with toughness more than ever. Sam Hartman. That long mesh and then his pass hit the umpire. Desmond Evans put pressure on the quarterback. And then unfortunately it was the umpire, Jim Eckel, who took one off the hat. 
A lot of times this throw gets so close to the line of scrimmage, good penetration, and a nice hit by Desmond Evans affecting that throw as well. Look out, Hartman turned back into Desmond Evans and then got away. And finally throws it away. But good pressure by Carolina. You've been amazed, Ty, how much time Hartman has on throws that are so close to the line of scrimmage, but so far today, not so much. Yeah, well, because North Carolina is getting penetration. I mean, the key to this offense and being effective is that wall up front staying solid. The veteran offensive line, and I believe the left end of their line move prior to the snap. I'll start. Offense number 62. Five yard penalty. Third down. Devontae Gordon, the right tackle. It's interesting. The North Carolina coaches we met with yesterday were talking about Desmond Evans says. He's a guy that we thought was going to be a lot better this year. He's kind of had a slow start and inconsistent. We need to get more out of him. Back-to-back -back plays, Desmond Evans has popped out on this possession. Lined up across from one of the tight ends, Blake Whitehart. Now third and 15. More time for Hartman. Down the middle as a man wide open. First down to the 45. Jaquari Roberson, their leading receiver. Now, see, this is great protection. And, and Sam Hartman trusts his protection. The back stays in to help. Look at that back, number 14 in there, Ellison, just helping out. That's how you can throw those deep dins. Justice Ellison turns the corner and takes Trey Morrison for a ride. There is another flag down. Ellison crossed midfield. Got about nine if it stands. It's number four. 15 yards to be added to the end of the run. First down. It's Trey Morrison uh, also had a critical face mask penalty on a fourth down play in South Bend last week. Allowed Notre Dame to keep the ball in the very next play. They threw a touchdown pass. It's a critical penalty, critical play in the game a week ago. So the run and the penalty. And Wake Forest at the 32-yard line. Scored at least 35 points in all eight games. They're the only team that has scored 35 or more in each of its games this season. Ellison for two. Meanwhile, it was Mac Brown's Tar Heels who were number 10 in the AP poll in the preseason. That's where Wake Forest is now. And Mac felt they were overrated. And they lost two running backs and two wide receivers to the NFL draft. That put a lot of unfair, he thought, expectations on this team. And as a young nucleus, they're four and four. Whitehart, the tight end, was open in the flat. The Demon Deacons on the move. They're at the Tar Heel 14, first and 10. Nice little play action pass. You know, when you run inside zone like both of these teams do, that tight end usually comes in motion to block the backside end, and you just slip them out in the flat for a nice little completion. That's the 11th career catch for Chapman, who's a sixth year senior. Excuse me, Whitehart. His sixth catch of the season. Justice Ellison, the ball carrier, to the 10 yard line. We see three different running backs play pretty much an equal amount of time in this Wake Forest offense. Kind of crazy to think they had another running back, Kenneth Walker, on this team last year who's lighting it up for Michigan State this year. Left via the transfer portal. Lots of time for Hartman. Dumps it down. A good tackle to prevent the first down. Morris Conley made the tackle on Blake Whitehart at the six. It'll be third down and two. A.T. Perry has been very dangerous in this part of the field because he's a big receiver, six foot five. This is him down the bottom of the screen. See if they try to isolate him one on one. He's been one of the hottest receivers in the country. Three straight 100 yard games coming in. Hartman's looking at him. Hartman's looking at the end zone and gets there. I think he could have thrown it to Perry. I think he had a step on the defender, but Perry just kept running to the back of the end zone. The defender went with him, and Sam Hartman saw grass to the end zone.
Good decision by Hartman, matching the running ability of Sam Howell. As we take a look at the replay from the progressive pylon camp. A six yard touchdown run for the red shirt sophomore from Charlotte, Sam Hartman. He's been a much better runner this year, too. You know, I remember seeing him as a freshman, 175 pounds, kind of getting knocked around. He's a solid 210 now, much more effective running the football. He had a chance to throw it if he wanted it. He said, I'll just take it the easy way and run it in myself. The Duke has really struggled. They've lost nine straight conference games. By an average of 28 points per game. DJ Jones had trouble with the kickoff. They give him the touchback. Well, we talked about North Carolina and the program under Mac Brown. Eight and four last year, lost to Texas A&M in the Orange Bowl when several key players had opted out. And that forced them on to the NFL. Two outstanding running backs, two wide receivers, but still, even though they're eight and four last year, which is good, not great, yeah. and they lost all that talent, they're number 10 in the preseason poll, which to me was a compliment to how people felt about Sam Howell. Right. But Mac said we were overrated for sure. And I agree with Mac Brown. I don't think, I, I hate preseason polls. I don't think there should be any poll until you get to the month of October. Let teams play and prove themselves. And, and then you find out who's legit. DJ Jones carried on first down for the Hall of Famer, Mac Brown. Still fiery at age 70. And is a big believer in the future here at Carolina. Part of the problem this year, Todd, is that they're transitioning from that older core to these talented young recruiting classes that they've had. Yeah. And sometimes it can be a problem on a team when you have younger guys who are taking over for older guys right. who are more experienced, but the young guys are going to make some mistakes, but he's playing the talent right now in the future. Especially when you're 4-4. Four four. If you're 8-0 or 7-1, those those attitudes don't show up as much and one guy they're going to get involved here real soon is Josh Downs I mean he has been a great player this year hasn't touched it yet good chance for him here on third down One of the leading receivers in the country it stayed with a steady dose of the run game to start this one DJ Jones stopped and to coach Clawson's point we don't mind giving up yards right. just get stops on third down get the ball back situational defense that's where they've been good red zone taking the ball away short yardage that was a nice blitz by DJ Taylor the linebacker and Luke Masterson both involved in the backfield on that play and forcing a punt and if you get a few stops in a game like this that's all it takes I mean Dave Clawson said if our defense is just average with the way we're playing offense this year we're gonna have a chance in every game Ben Kiernan, native of Ireland. Taylor Moore in back deep, and he makes a fair catch on a 36-yard punt. Tonight on ESPN, 7 Eastern time, LSU and number two, Alabama. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet, and Holly Rowe. LSU 4-4 four and four off a of bye week. Alabama 7-1. and one. Bryce Young, the odds-on favorite right now to win the Heisman. Here's a look at the All-State college football playoff rankings first iteration that came out this past Tuesday no surprise Georgia number one Alabama Michigan State Oregon and then on the outside for the moment at least looking in Ohio State and Cincinnati Hartman taken down another sack Back at the 25-yard line, Javari Ritzy back up defensive end. He's right in here just, just powering his way through. Again, it was pretty decent protection initially. But Ritzy able to get in there and get the sack. Pressure on Sam Hartman, pretty effective here in the first quarter. Talk about young players playing. He's a freshman. Ritzy, his first career sack. Hartman zips one over the middle, incomplete. Try to get it to Keyshawn Williams. Geo Biggers had the coverage for Carolina. Here's third down and 16. So far this year, down and distance has not mattered much to Sam Hartman in this Wake Forest offense, but the pressure so far early in this game has been a little bit different. Carolina rushed only three. Hartman throws an interception. Cameron Kelly 
takes it back for the Tar Heels. This is zone defense. It's not man, it's not pressure, and Cameron Kelly is right here, number nine. He is just going to read the eyes of the quarterback, Sam Hartman. Watch as he drops. Eyes are on the quarterback because he's playing zone, not man, and cuts right in front of that throw at the seam and makes the interception. They got him third and long. They went to a zone defense, and they got Sam Hartman on that one. Third interception of the season, his junior season for Kelly. And just the fourth thrown by Hartman in this game, nine of the year for Wake Forest. Howell is a man down the seam. First down, 12-yard line. Beautiful throw to Ty Chandler, who's an excellent receiver out of the backfield. They brought Josh Downs in motion, and that influenced the defense and opened up that middle seam for the running back coming out of the backfield. So much attention paid to Josh Downs, who hasn't caught one yet, but he affected the defense on that play. 30-yard gain. Carolina poised to reclaim the lead. And this has shades of last year's meeting already. Powell too high, trying to get it to Downs who has caught at least eight in every game this year. Watch, as Downs goes in motion here, it's just going to affect the defense. The back's going to come right down through the middle. Everybody aware of Josh Downs, the favorite target of Sam Howell, but it opened up things for another target. In that case, Ty Chandler out of the backfield. Downs has 70 catches this year. Quarterback draw again. Howell again into the end zone. <laughs> That's his dad, Duke, who was one of his coaches in high school. Well, Dave Clawson, prophetic, when the Wake Forest coach told us yesterday, to me, the game comes down to can we tackle Sam Howell? So far, they haven't. Well, one thing is for sure, you're not going to tackle him with arms. I mean, you've got to get bodies and wrap him because his lower body is so strong. You're going to see the first missed tackle in the backfield right there. And now just arm tackles, people trying to fly at him. Kevin Pointer couldn't get him, and then nobody else could get a body around him. And you see just that strength and his ability when he runs north and south to break arm tackles. Second touchdown of the ball game. Well, some people think it's been a disappointing year for Howell. I think they just look at the team record. Dave Clawson said, to me, he's better than he was a year ago. His numbers are similar. He doesn't have the, as good a cast around him. And he's been the unselfish team leader. But here's a guy who might be a first-round right. pick who's throwing himself yep. into the opponents in the run game for offensive coordinator Phil Longo because he's such a competitor, such a team guy. Bill Longo told us he, they, he was very excited the way they played offense the last two weeks. He said, I think these next four weeks are going to be really fun for us offensively. They played a great game against Notre Dame on offense. Just a couple plays short of pulling off a win there and kind of picking it up right where they left off at South Bend the week ago. John and Kim's kickoff is another touchback. Here's a look at today's hardest working player. Brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Well, he's been doing it with his legs more than his arm today. Just showing toughness, grit, leadership, willingness to do whatever he can do to help his team be in a position to win. And again, most of that has just been running and, and more tackling and a lack of wrapping up by this Wake Forest defense. And they're going to have to change their tactics if they want to get Sam Howell on the ground as this game goes on. This is a guy who has run for nearly over 800 yards if you take sack yardage out of the, the equation. Christian Turner is the running back for Wake Forest. All well, three running backs have touched the ball now. He got banged out of bounds, but it's a first down on a 12-yard pickup. 
Needs 139 total yards now to become the all-time leader in total offense here at North Carolina. Last week in that win, a loss rather, at Notre Dame, he passed T.J. Yates to become the all-time leader in passing yardage. Hartman on target. Another first down to the 50-yard line. Good catch by the Stanford transfer, Donald Stewart. One of the things North Carolina did not want to allow today defensively is off of that play action, voiding the middle and, and losing your post defender. They've hit a lot of deep posts off that play action. They haven't given one yet today. Christian Turner, another catch and run. And he's to the 44-yard line of UNC. They'll need three on second down. Turner's a transfer from Michigan. In his first year at Wake Forest. They bring a blitz to the Tar Heels. Flag thrown. If the play stands, Turner got the first down to the 38-yard line, but they were clapping on the Carolina sideline. Offense number 55. 10-yard penalty. Second down. The center, Michael Jurgens. Are a very good offensive line. Dave Flossen said yesterday, very quietly, we've had a good offensive line for three or four years now. People are just finding out about it. Well, and this whole offense, I mean, it's virtually all back intact from a year ago. 20 starters back on offense, defense, and special teams. And, and they are familiar with this system. They're veteran guys, mature guys. Uh, they execute. They make very few mistakes. There was one. Aquarius Conley injured for North Carolina. He seems to be fine. He's back on his feet. That's the reason for the stoppage in play. And while we have a moment, let's send you back to the studio. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, an update from Athens. Number one, Georgia Stetson Bennett, the offense on track to Arian Smith, tapping off an 11 play drive, and the defense just got a safety as well, Bulls. Yeah, Georgia finally waking up down in Athens. It is currently 9 to 3 over on ESPN. Back to you guys. All right, Kevin, thank you. Here it's 14-10 for North Carolina. Wake Forest has the ball at midfield. Second down and nine after the penalty. Sam Harbin making his 29th career start. Through for 402. Last week on homecoming, their win in Winston-Salem against Duke, and he didn't even play in the fourth quarter. He's thrown for 400 in back-to-back -back games. We're well over 400. Bad Army, and they scored 70 points to beat the Black Knights. Justice Ellison gets just one. They're Sam Hartman's parents, Dr. Mark and Lisa Hartman. The right guard who was down at the end of that play. Loic Nagasam Naya is the injured player. Another stalwart of that offensive line, his 20th career start. While they look at him, here's Molly McGrath. Well, Todd mentioned North Carolina's defensive pressures look a little different today. That could be because their defensive coordinator, Jay Bateman, is calling the game from the booth for the very first time in his career. He told me he's up there to see the field better, especially with Wake Forest's unique and fast-paced offense. And he said team leader Jeremiah Gemmel will be the calming force on the sideline with him in the booth. He told Gemmel yesterday, it's either you or me who has to go up to the booth. So I need you to be me on the sidelines. He says if this is successful today, it's something he'll stick with for the rest of the season, Sean. All right, thank you, Molly. Interesting matchup in the uh, coordinators on this side of the ball. Jay Bateman for the defense of North Carolina. Warren Ruggiero is the offensive coordinator for Wake Forest. What a great job he's done. You would think Warren would be a candidate for the Broyles Award with this innovative offense. And they were once together on the Elon staff under Pete Lembo as defensive and offensive coordinator. 
Well, one of the things Bateman is thrilled about today is he's got one player back that's only played in one game. Storm Duck, number 29, is on the field. He's healthy. They feel like when he is healthy, he's as good as any cornerback in this league and uh, has not been able to play very much, but he looks good today, and uh, that's a good sign for North Carolina fans to have him back on the field. He broke his foot early last season, missed the last 10 games, and has played sparingly, as you saw on the graphic this year. Third down and eight. And it's a run call by Coach Ruggiero, wow. and Ellison got very close to the line to make. Doesn't look like he got it from here. And we'll see if Dave Clawson will go for this fourth down and short. Good patience by Ellison on the run. They are going for it, or at least showing it. And they snap it quickly, and Ellison gets there. <laughs> See, part of this slow mesh, the quarterback is going to try to get a little block at the end of that play. I mean, he's hit, but he's also there to kind of block Cameron Kelly just to keep him away from the running back. A little different look. Here's the post. Off the play, fake up for grabs, and incomplete. Looked like Jaquari Roberson was going to have a touchdown, but he couldn't hang on. Trey Morrison there for the Tar Heels. I just don't think he could control it all the way to the ground. He has the catch, he's got it, and then it's slapped out. Great job by Morrison getting a hand in there and knocking it out as the two players were on their way to the ground. He's a veteran is Morrison, his 40th career start. They brought a blitz, didn't get there. Good catch in traffic by Donald Stewart, who held on as he got blasted by Desmond Evans. Here's third down and five. Time out. The previous play was under further review for targeting. Stewart had to go high for the catch. Uh, I don't think that that's not targeting. That's not targeting. The hands were up because he was going for the football. You know, I don't think that there's anything that looks like targeting there. Do you agree, Matt? I, I do agree. The player from the front definitely uses his hands first. It doesn't. It doesn't look like it's forcible. The player from the back is absorbing the the hit. So I don't think there's anything there either. Uh, I think this is going to be the play's going to stand, or there's no targeting. And the other question was, did Stewart hang on? And it does appear he completed the catch. And Jeff Flanagan with the headset off. After further review, there is no targeting on the play. And it means Wake Forest will have third down and five at the 35-yard line. They're on the edge of field goal range, down by four in the final 36 seconds of the opening quarter. You got to think Dave Clawson and Warren Ruggiero might be thinking two plays here already. They already went for a fourth and one. They're in that area of the field where they could be thinking two plays to convert the first down here as well. It'll be a long field goal and into a little bit of a cool breeze. Hartman has room as he leaves the pocket. He didn't want to slide, and he took a hit on his shoulder and bounces right back up, and he's just short of the first down. Got hit by Jeremiah Gimmel. Yeah, he didn't slide because he knew what he needed for the first down. He still wasn't able to get there, but if he would have slid, he would have been probably two yards shy of that first down mark. Takes us to the end of the first quarter. Very entertaining. The quarterbacks, the stars, as anticipated. ESPN's present. Gibble will be on the sideline for the rest of the game. He's one of their best players, second leading tackler, a team captain. Really a coach on the field. We visited with Jeremiah yesterday. He says he wants to coach when his playing days are over. That's a huge loss, especially against this complex Wake Forest offense. 
which is running a play on first and ten. Sam Hartman put it in zone. What catch is made by Jacory Roberson for a touchdown. Nice change of pace by Warren Ruggiero moving his quarterback out of the pocket. North Carolina been able to get pressure in the pocket. Does he maintain control? Feeder in. Catch was made. Control on the way to the ground from the progressive pylon cam. This is a great catch by Roberson. And a nice play design rolling the quarterback out and throwing on the move by Sam Hartman. The 16th career touchdown reception. He is ninth all-time at Wake Forest in that category. Already a fourth lead change of the game, and Nick Skiba makes it 17 to 14 for the Demon Deacons. North Carolina has been able to muddy the picture a little bit, getting pressure inside. So what does Warren Ruggiero do? He says, let's fake it, get our quarterback outside the pocket, get him out at a different launch point, and he makes an accurate throw rolling to his right to Roberson. Perfect position, back of the corner of the end zone. Morrison and Kelly in coverage, but just a perfect throw by Sam Hartman. He has scored a bunch of touchdowns lately. He had a streak of six straight games with at least one touchdown reception ended in week three of this season against Florida State. Hartman's now thrown a touchdown pass and an interception. He's run for a touchdown. And he told us yesterday that beard is not coming off <laughs> as long as they're undefeated. Why would you change anything? I'm very envious because I, I couldn't even grow a beard if I wanted to. And that, and that is like authentic mountain man beard. Ivan Moore kicks off. It'll be another touchback. We'll be back in 10 seconds. Now a look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. I love my Ram Trucks. Yes, you do. Love it, love it. But that play selection, they clearly have come out yep. trying to run the ball, have the Tar Heels, and effectively so. Sam Howell, their leading rusher, throws on the run over the head of Josh Downs. I think North Carolina is going to get called for having linemen downfield on this play. Nope, it's going to go against Wake Forest. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 28. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Zion Keith, remember their secondary. They play a lot of players at every level of the defense. And that's a big change over the years under Dave Clawson yes. as he's built the program. Two years ago, they were 7 and 1. He thought they'd have a 10 or 11 win season, but injuries hit them hard. He said, We just didn't have the depth to survive that. They finished 8 and 5. They have depth now. And Howell will go down. It took them a while to get him down. Miles Fox first there. The super senior in his sixth year of college football. Well, they do a great job of running twist games. And you can see the end of the tackle run a twist. This is one of the things they do really well with their defensive front. It's only a four-man rush. But that twist stunt fooled the North Carolina offensive line on that left side. They got to the quarterback, Sam Howell. Second sack for the Demon Deacons. They averaged three per game, 14th in the nation in that category. Third in the ACC behind Syracuse and Pitt. Howell, far sideline, caught. Antoine Green swung back. It will give him progress to the 46. A good job getting most of that yardage back, bringing up a very manageable third down play here for Sam Howell. A play that he probably will not have to hold the ball long. Third and four. These are two of the best offenses in the country on third down. 
North Carolina number seven in the country. Wake is five. They convert. Antoine Green again to the Demon Deacon 43-yard line. A gain of 11 and a first down. Yeah, good read by Sam Howell. A little crossing route on the inside, but it was zone coverage. It wasn't man-to-man. -man. Josh Downs was crossing also. Green was the guy that popped open. He's a talented guy. They've been waiting for him to emerge, and Green has lately. Howell. Pulled it down, ran to the 38 for five more. Deion Bergen the stop. I don't think Wake Forest is doing anything different or unique to take Josh Downs out of the game. I, I just think that right now they've tried to go other places with the ball. They're running more than they're throwing. But you know number 11 for North Carolina is going to factor into things before this one's done. He's been too good of a player. Great change of direction, change of speed, slot receiver. Wake coaches think he's the best receiver they've faced this year. Hard to argue. Howell. Just refusing to go down. Finally, they drive him back. After all that, it got just to the line of scrimmage. They've only thrown four passes. They've tried to throw more than that, but Howell's pulled it down. Well, he was looking for downs on that one. Excellent coverage by Kalen Carson on that time, on that player. Zion Keith, I should say. Was a he tried to change speeds on him and go a little out and up, and Keith was not fooled at all. Third in the country in catches with those 70. None so far today. They bring a blitz. It's a screen and well defended by Wake Forest as they drop it for a loss. It was Garrett Walston on a tight end screen and Gavin Holmes blew it up back at the 40 yard line. Yeah, nice job by Gavin Holmes. He's going to come from over here. You're not going to see him yet because he's going to be moving in with a receiver, but he reads the play and stays at home and makes the play for the no game. Excellent play that time by Holmes. Mac Brown will go for it on fourth down and seven. Could be a pooch kick, too. So Howell did that last week, not this time. He fires for a first down. There's Josh Downs with his first catch of the game for a fourth down conversion, a 15-yard pickup. Well, right when they needed it, they finally got their man the football. Nice little inside and out route. You see the, the quickness and the change of direction speed. That's what makes him such a unique receiver. Luke Masterson is injured for Wake Forest. Tossed, buffalo, sauce, hot honey, flipped, boneless, dipped. Arby's brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Clothing and gear designed and tested to do. And Mazda. Back at Keenan Stadium, the home of Carolina football since 1927. What a beautiful setting this is in amongst the Carolina Pines. Entertaining football game. Here's another design quarterback draw. Why wouldn't you? Sam Howell to the 20-yard line for a gain of five. Such an added weapon when you get in the red zone or close to the red area to, to have a quarterback that is a willing runner and a tough runner. Just, just makes so much more difficult for defensive coordinators and how you defend the red zone when you have to worry about a running quarterback as well. The preseason ACC Player of the Year turned it over three times in their season opening loss at Virginia Tech, and it's almost as if immediately vanished from the Heisman landscape. That might have been premature. Ty Chandler inside the five and down. At the one-yard line, he broke a couple of tackles and nearly scored. He settled for 19 yards. Nice little counter play pulled the center in the backside tackle. Good timing, good execution. Ty Chandler, touchdown, North Carolina. The fifth lead change of this game and there's still 9.41 to go until halftime. And for Chandler, his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. He got you down here. Why not let him pay it off? 
Here was the play that got him there. They pulled the center, the backside tackle, and Chandler cuts right inside and shows power getting towards that goal line. Nice drive. Extra point good by Grayson Atkins. Well, a lot of action. He might be getting hungry. And it's caught for a first down by A.T. Perry. I, I do. Like locally sourced bacon is an interesting phrase yeah. to me. Well, you know, I didn't have time to go into it. It's the same store, same provider they've gotten it for since the 90s. You know, and they... And they nearby. Yeah, nearby. Yep. So it's a local source of bacon. Well written. Thank Flag you. down, receiver down. And there are three flags. Keyshawn Williams was the intended receiver. The ball sailed way over his head. Contact with Jaquarius Conley. Two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Holding defense number zero. That penalty was declined. Personal foul, continued hands to the face, number 56 defense. That's 15 yards from the previous spot. Carries a first down. Now both teams have had some costly penalties. Tamari Fox, here's, here's on the inside. That's the hands of the face. That's the one that is being accepted. You see the receiver on the ground. There's the pass interference that was declined. The bottom result is great field position again for Wake Forest on the North Carolina side of the 50-yard line. The fourth Carolina penalty and Wake Forest uncharacteristically flagged five times already. Nice patience on that run by Christian Beal Smith. You mentioned it earlier, Todd. They had Kenneth Walker here last yeah. year, part of a running back rotation. He went to Michigan State because he wanted more of a chance to showcase his talents, be more of a featured ball carrier, and obviously that's worked out very well for him and for Michigan State. But this three-headed monster running back has worked pretty well yeah. for Wake Forest as well. Similar numbers. Although that was two years at Wake Forest. Surpassed that in one. He was emerged as a Heisman Trophy candidate at Michigan State. Pressure off the corner. Hartman to the end zone. A one-handed catch by A.T. Perry. Couldn't get free from Cameron Kelly, so he said, all I need is one arm. And it's a 32-yard touchdown. Just immediate recognition by Sam Hartman of the corner blitz to the short side of the field. He knew he had a safety trying to cover his big receiver and makes a perfect throw. And you can see Perry, the strength. Here's the blitz from the corner. Hartman sees it right away and gives his receiver a chance. Perry was able to hold the defender off with his right hand and snatch the football with his left. He's trying to make the argument that he was being interfered with by Perry. Perry's ninth touchdown catch of the season. Started the day with eight, which was tied for seventh in the country. Ski bad at the extra point. What a catch by the red shirt sophomore from Lake Worth, Florida. One extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. A lot of points being scored by these kickers today. Sixth lead change of the game, Wake Forest back on top. Where's Conley? Brings the kickoff back to the 23-yard line. Here's Kevin Nagandi. So let's go back to Georgia, number one in the land, and the offense on track. This is Stetson Bennett to Jermaine Burton. They would have called Bennett. a touchdown, but he was Look taken down at the one with the knee, 47 yards, Burton. Yeah, really good job by Bennett, giving his guy a chance to make a play, and Burton did that. Would lead to a Zamir White touchdown, 19-3 Georgia. Hey, they don't have Garrett Wilson, no problem. C.J. Stroud's got a ton of options. Alave, and then just watch the weapons cook. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just throw it to one of them and let them cook care when they're doing that. Right now, Ohio State up 7 17 to 3 in Lincoln. Back to you, Sean. Mm. Looking like it could end up being a three win season for Nebraska. Despite so many close calls. Shoveled ahead. Howell to Josh Downs. And then a flag thrown at the end of the play where the tackle was made. 
And that was a receiver downfield on the 69. Penalty is five yards. First down. You know, th this is one you really can't get upset with the lineman because the play got extended. Sam Howell was, was holding onto the ball. He's leaving the pocket, and then he tried to flip it. The center's right in the middle here. This this is in RPO, so it's a run fake. Here's the center downfield, well downfield. <laughs> no. Sam Howell is, yeah, he was way downfield. <laughs> he, he, he was. He was, he was. I, I don't think we need Matt. I think we could see that he was beyond four yards. Oh, so. what's 12 yards down the field? <laughs> Here on Johnson, the center is divided time with Brian Anderson. Ooh, That's wow. too high. Jones was, Downs was breaking free over the middle, and Sam Howell threw it a little bit too high. Yeah, he had him. Jasir Taylor was in coverage, and Downs had a step going to the post. And the ball just sailed on Sam Howell. There was some bodies around his feet. Wasn't able to step into that throw, and the ball took off on him. It's five out of seven passing so far for Howell. He is the leading rusher in the game with 65 yards, two touchdowns. Running for his life here, will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Wrestled down by D.J. Taylor. I remember Phil Longo told us yesterday, we were talking about Sam Howell running. He says his, you know, running laterally is terrible. But vertically, he can really do it. At that time, Wake Forest got him moving sideways. They didn't let him get up the field. They didn't let him go north-south. They made him move sideways. And they were able to wrap him up behind the line of scrimmage. Good defense, good solid defense by the Demon Deacons here. Two sacks. North Carolina has surrendered 32 sacks now this year, among the worst in the country, 126 in the nation out of 130. And Howell might go down again. And he will back at the 15-yard line. Luigi Villain, Chase Jones among those there for the Demon Deeks. Well, he had a bunch of guys out. He only had one possible guy open. That was Antoine Green who ran a curl route. But by the time he opened up, Sam Howell was already trying to look for a place to escape. That is one of the reasons why they have had a lot of sacks against them. Howell will hang on to that ball for a long time, take the hit, try to wait for somebody to break open. Ben Kiernan, the punter, and is juggled. Taylor Morin got belted down after the mop at the 29. He did well just to get it back in his possession. Lines up as a 45-yard punt, the return of minus seven. We honor those who serve, brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union, North Carolina defensive back Aquarius Conley's father, Terrell, retired in September after 20 years as a petty officer in the Navy, joined the Navy right out of high school. Over the next 20 years, he and the family lived in six different states before they finally settled right here in beautiful North Carolina. Enjoy your well-earned retirement, Terrell. Thank you for your service. Christian Turner finally wrestled down. And that's his son, Aquarius Conley, right on cue, making the tackle at the 35. Yeah, this, this run offense is so different. The play action offense looks different. The run offense looks different, too, because the back has a lot of different ways that he can hit the play. Lyman throw low, cost him the first down, at least for the moment, as Quarry Roberson was at the line to make. Third down and four. Can anybody get a stop? Situational football, situational defense, third down defense. Can you get off the field? Hartman has a man. Good catch on a throw behind Donald Stewart. There's been more of a presence than usual today. He's deep down their receiver depth chart.
But he's having a good game. That's already his third catch. Well, they went to motion to get three receivers on one side. That left Stewart alone on the other side and a lot of room to catch that slant route. Even though it wasn't a great throw, a lot of room to make the play. 15 catches all year entering today. Strange looking play. And Hartman has to throw it away as he was being pressured by Power Eccles. A freshman who will see more playing time today with the disqualification and targeting of their defensive leader, Jeremiah Gimmel. Well, Sean Eccles is calling the defense on the field with Gemmel out because of that targeting penalty. Gemmel spent all of his time on the sideline coaching up Eccles, telling him, you got this, talk more than you think you need to, and drawing up plays for him. Hartman's pass incomplete, tried to fire it into A.T. Perry. There's Storm Duck, who looks to be moving very well. If he stays healthy, that's a huge addition to their defense, as you said earlier. Exactly five minutes to go until halftime. Number nine, Wake Forest, trying to remain undefeated. Up by three. Hartman not on the same page with Perry. And it was Storm Duck again in coverage. Well, remember the last time when Perry caught the touchdown, he was working on a safety. Not on a corner as talented as Storm Duck. He uses his hand, uses his leg in great position. And Sam Harper really know where to go with the football. That was excellent coverage by Storm Duck. I just like saying that name, mm -hmm. Storm Duck. Definitely on the all-name team yeah. so far this season. Ivan Moore to punt again. Had one game earlier this year at Army where they didn't punt at all. They scored 70 points. This is the second time in Wake history. They played a whole game without a punt. I don't know if Army punted either. They ran for 416 yards against Wake Forest that day, too. In that game, Wake scored 63 points on offense in 17 minutes. Time of possession. The AT&T countdown to the College Football Playoff National Championship, Monday, January 10th. Coming your way. Back to you, Sean. All right, Kevin, thank you. Sam Howell's ball now from his own 17. Carolina down by three. The pitch to Ty Chandler. We got walloped at the 22. Ryan Smender there with help from Nasir Green. He's a standout who's been injured, hasn't played much the last five games. Battling an ankle problem and a hamstring injury. Honorable mention all conference last year. Chandler again. Yeah, he's a valuable part of this defense when he's healthy, Nasir Greer, because he can play corner, and like right now, he's out there as a safety, but he has those corner coverage skills, and that's part of that depth that Dave Clawson was telling us about. They, they, they finally have enough depth to play a lot of people, a lot of snaps, and, uh, and, and be able to overcome some, some injuries that, that knock guys out for a game or two. He returned last week, played sparingly against Duke after missing the previous three games. Third down and one. Whoa. Keeps it and cannot escape Rondell Boythroyd. What a play by Boythroyd. He tackled both guys. He tackled the running back and the quarterback <laughs> at the mesh point. I mean, here he is right here. He's just going to get right into the backfield and make the play. Follows the tackle down and grabs both guys. Pulls them to the ground. Had a little help from Miles Fox. Crowd thought he face masked. I Sam think Howell, it looks like he grabbed a jersey. Rondell Bothroyd, sophomore from Manchester, Connecticut. He's one of those three-star recruits yep. who Wake Forest develops, and he turns into a terrific player. They have a squad filled with those. Ben Kiernan, the punt. Taylor Moore in the fair catch at the 48-yard line, and now there's a skirmish. And 
several flags on the field. Okay, Jeff Flanagan and his crew to sort out. North Carolina playing without Jeremiah Gimmel. Holding the saving team to the six. It's a 10 yard penalty at the end of the kick. The saving team kicks it back. So apparently all that pushing and shoving went unpenalized. <laughs> oh, I did a good job of getting yeah, there control really wasn't of much that pushing quickly. and shoving, yep. more woofing than anything. Dave Clausen not satisfied with the explanation he's being given by Kirk Lewis. Kick off your week nine NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. tomorrow. The countdown crew on ESPN and the app. Randy Moss will weigh in on the Odell Beckham Jr. saga being released by the Cleveland Browns. Then Monday Night Football, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN, Deportes and the app. The Chicago Bears and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bears three and five. Pittsburgh's four and three. Off a win against those Browns this past Sunday. Christian Beal Smith for a two yard gain. We're under three minutes to go in the half. Each team with all three timeouts. A little more aggressive approach that time by the North Carolina defense. Anticipating run on first down. They brought the two linebackers downhill getting penetration you got to kind of pick and choose how aggressive you want to be against that slow action because they'll get you to be real aggressive and then throw the ball behind you for big plays that time was the, the right time to bring pressure on that first down play so Harvin in no hurry they have plenty of time to go down and score they don't want to leave any time for North Carolina if they give the ball back Christian Beal Smith Found the crease and found Carolina territory to the 49-yard line. First down. You know, that's a play I really like, and a lot of teams run it. You throw as long as you throw that ball behind the line of scrimmage, your blockers can get down and get engaged down the field. It's like an outside run. Hartman surrounded, got it off. And out of bounds, A.T. Perry. Storm duck there for the heels at the 42, a gain of seven. Remember, Wake Forest won the toss and deferred, so they're looking to go two for one here. Take as much time, maybe take as all the time off this last possession of the second quarter and then get the ball to start the second half. And try to seize momentum in the game. Their defense has gotten them a couple stops, and now they're in scoring territory again. Scoring has slowed down a little bit here in the late stages of the quarter. Christian Beal Smith close to the first down. Cedric Gray made the tackle. Another talented young player, just a sophomore from Charlotte. They line up very quickly. They caught the Tar Heels by surprise. Hartman, the keeper, for the first down. Uh, again, without Jeremiah Gimmel on the field. You've got a new signal caller. You've got young linebackers, and that's just smart football by Sam Hartman. Recognizing the confusion and going with the quick count for the sneak and the first down. Hartman throwing deep. Barnes open and has a touchdown. He got behind three Tar Heel defenders. 37-yard score. And for the first time in this game, there is a two-score lead. Well, Moran's right here. He's going to run to the post. The guy that is going to get fooled is this backside safety. Watch Sam Hartman with his eyes look to the left, hold that safety over there, and then by the time he breaks, it's too late. He ran past the corner, and the backside safety was watching the eyes of the quarterback and a beautiful throw by Sam Hartman. Three touchdown passes in the half for Hartman.
Skiba's extra point is good. That's 25 for the season for Hartman. The single season Wake Forest record is 29 by John Wolford, who was Hartman's predecessor at starting quarterback back in 2017. Well, he's done a little bit of everything. Thrown from the pocket, he's run one in, he's thrown on the move. And you're seeing why Sam Hartman in this offense has been the only offense in college football to score over 35 points every game. Touchdown to Perry, he read the corner blitz, made the nice read, the nice throw, and uh, I mean, they're legit. You know, the, the, offensively, this team is legit. I mean, the quarterback is legit, the receivers are good, they've got three backs, and they're very confident. They believe in what they're doing, and they're playing with a very high level of confidence and execution right now. It's 58 career touchdown passes now for Harton. And that's two from the school record. He's one behind John Wolf, who we just mentioned. The all-time school record is 60 career TD throws by Riley Skinner. Harmon's going to break that before the end of the year. Aquarius Conley. So the 25, 101 to go in the half, and three timeouts for the Tar Heels down by 10. Time now for the All-State playoff predictor. These are the five of the six remaining undefeated teams who do not have UTSA on the graphic, not in the top 25 of the uh, college football playoff rankings, even though they're number 16 in the AP poll. Wake Forest right now with a 1% chance to make the playoff, according to the All-State playoff predictor. Well, all Wake Forest can worry about is taking care of their own business, which is winning games. The same thing we'd say for Cincinnati. All they could do is win the games that are in front of them. And, uh, all of them. But, I, but I'm impressed with what I'm seeing with my own eyes today. I watch film, but I'm impressed with what they do offensively and how well they execute. Powell to Antoine Green for 11. Powell bounces outside. And wisely runs out of bounds at the 45-yard line. 19 yards on that run for Howell. Just such a sturdy guy. He's six foot, probably 220 pounds, 225. And again, he just breaks through arm tackles and kind of bounces off tacklers, or would-be tacklers. With the 76 yards rushing. And two touchdowns. Fourth time this year he's rushed for at least two in a game. Pulls it down again. Flag thrown as the pass was incomplete. And now another flag down. Looked like Joshua Zudu was holding Luigi Valain, but then there was another flag fired in late, which makes you wonder if there was a late hit. Yeah, I think two fouls get on the play. Yeah. Holding offense number 79. Personal foul roughing the passer number 29. Those fouls will offset. We'll replay the down. Kalen Carson, the freshman cornerback, is the guy that's going to come up and hit the quarterback Sam Howell after the ball's release. It wasn't a lot of hit, but it was definitely late. And you're right on the hole by Azudu on the inside. Yeah, they announced 79, but it was 75. They don't have a 79 on the field. So first and 10, 31 seconds to go. Howell launching one deep up into the breeze. Lots of contact. And Flags fly was nearly intercepted by Nasir Greer. And they might be flagging Isaiah Wingfield for pass interference. The crowd thinks so. Yeah, looking at the 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. First down. Looking at the flags here, and he's throwing this ball into the wind. The ball hung up on, on Sam Howell a little bit, but there's the contact clearly by Wingfield. Aggressive pylon cam look at it. Ball hung up in the air, almost intercepted, but clearly pass interference. And North Carolina with a new set of downs here with 23 seconds. Still have all three of their timeouts, too. And they are in field goal range, although in a game like this, as you said earlier, you want to score a touchdown. You always want to score a touchdown. But you need them today. Powell threw it away. 
By the way, if you want more information about each team's chances to make the playoff, check out ESPN.com slash Allstate Playoff Predictor. The opportunity will be there for Wake Forest. If yeah. they win out, that's right. they're going to be right. an undefeated conference champion. And as you said earlier, their schedule gets a lot tougher down the stretch here. NC State, which is a top 20 team next. Then they go to Clemson. Then to Boston College. Howell is a man open. Downs looked like he was surprised there was nobody around him when he turned. Got a little more, ran out of bounds. 14-yard line, 16-yard gain. Now just nine seconds to go in the half. Powell has not yet thrown a touchdown pass today. He's thrown one in every start, every game of his career, 33 straight games with a touchdown pass. Longest active streak in the country. He's blitzed. He throws a little too far for Josh Downs. And they're going to try to get back within one score by sending the field goal unit out with four seconds to go. Pretty good coverage by Jasir Taylor that time. He was working on Josh Downs. Downs tried to stutter step, kind of change speeds on him, and Taylor was right with him. It would have to be a perfect throw. Sam Howell was under pressure a little bit. Here's Taylor in coverage, in good position, and Sam Howell just a slight overthrow. And have to settle for three, and that's, again, another stop of sorts for this Wake Forest defense in the red zone. Jason Atkins. Kicks a 31-yard field goal as time expires in the first half. <laughs> and 55 points on the board. Wake will get the second half kickoff. They now lead at the half for the eighth time in nine games. Trailed only at Syracuse, came back to win that one in overtime. And a terrific first half for and, and I really think as this second half goes now, whichever one of these defenses can come up with some situational plays, you know, who can who can create another turnover? There was one for each side in the first half. Who can get more stops on third down or the red zone? That's going to ultimately determine who wins the game. I believe the yardage total put up in this game in the first half didn't come close to the first half last year between these two teams. A game that Wake Forest led 35-24 at the half last year. They went up by 21 in the second half and lost. Their offense impressive again today. Yeah, and again, it's unique. It's play action that takes a little while to develop. The quarterback's close to the line of scrimmage. Sam Hartman, very comfortable running this offense. This time, great job by the back, recognizing the corner blitz, getting rid of the fake, and just picking up the man, allowing Hartman to quickly get it out for the touchdown to A.T. Perry, but uh, they're, they're fun to watch. I mean, I really enjoy how they operate in this offense. Thrown for 2-11, Hartman. Looked like his arm might have been impeded as it came forward, his pass over the head of A.T. Perry. But he has a chance to match Rusty LaRue and become the second quarterback ever to throw 400-plus yards in three straight games. For Wake Forest, Christian Beale Smith, the ball carrier. No chance for one of those stops you yep. were just talking about right here for the Tar Heels. Wake Forest was four for eight on third down the first half. Best in the ACC, over 50% conversion. First one out of the gate here, North Carolina chance to get off the field. Only fifth in the country on third down, but they won't convert on that one. The pass is incomplete. Nice one-handed catch by Ja'Quari Roberson, but he's out of bounds. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Matt Brown said at halftime losing Jeremiah Gemmel was huge for their defense. He said he's our captain, he's our leader, he's our best player on defense, and you have a freshman in power echoes replacing him, so check all the boxes for what you don't want to happen. But he said the key and the message to the defense, get off the field quickly to help Eccles out. He's got to be happy about that. You joined us late, Jeremiah Gemmel. Disqualified because of that targeting on the quarterback Hartman. First three and out for the Wake Forest offense. Ivan Morris punt returned by Josh Downs. Two good blocks. 
And Downs went out of bounds near midfield. It'll be excellent field position for the first possession of the second half for the Tar Heels. In that first half, Sam Howell only attempted 11 passes. They really were leaning heavy on the running game. Offensive line did a nice job with that, and Sam Howell running as well. Combination of Ty Chandler and, and Sam Howell, but I think they're going to have to get some more chunk plays in their passing game here in the second half as well to loosen up this Wake Forest defense. So we get Josh Downs more involved, just two catches. He's had at least eight in every game. His punt return of 17 yards. Has them operating from the 46. Ty Chandler. Whistle stopped the play after he picked up three. He had a terrific career at Tennessee. He's fifth all time there in all purpose yardage. Had a year of eligibility left as a grad student. Said he wanted to come to North Carolina in large part to play for Mac Brown. And there are a lot of football players who have said that over the years. To the play fake. Howell throwing deep single coverage. And it is caught. What a catch by Justin Olsen. Justin Olsen is the guy they like who can make the contested catches. A starting outside receiver. They're looking for other guys to emerge to take pressure off of the slot receiver, Josh Downs. Beautiful throw and catch. That's good coverage. I mean, that, that's good coverage by Gavin Holmes, but better concentration by the receiver, Olsen. Just his fourth career catch in the man in coverage, Gavin Holmes, injured on the play. Tossed, buffalo, sauced, hot honey, flipped, boneless, dipped, RV, razzled. Injury as he was involved in the coverage on Justin Olsen, the 45-yard gain for Carolina, the longest play of the day for either team. Wow, a lot of substitutions right now. About six new guys came in. There was a long time out, changing the personnel on that defensive front. Howell rolls out, throws too high. Trying to get it to the tight end, Bryson Nesbitt. The freshman who the coach has raved about, as a matter of fact, Phil Longo, the coordinator, told us yesterday, he thinks someday he's going to be a first-round pick in the NFL. Yeah. yeah, he showed up at Notre Dame last week, had a nice ball game, had three catches for 50 yards, and uh, again, they lost four great offensive players in the NFL last year. They're still trying to find guys to step up and take those roles. Quarterback draw. They were ready for it that time. See, that's how you have to tackle him. You've got to wrap up and tackle him. Ryan Smenda, longtime veteran leader in this defense. Arm tackles don't work on Sam Howe, especially when he's on the six-yard line. you got to wrap him up and get him to the ground. And wholesale substitutions on the defensive side. Five men came on, five went off. Third and goal from the six. They're a touchdown away from a tie. Again, here's Downs now. You kind of hide him in here as the inmost receiver of a three-receiver set. Looking at him, it is broken up. Again, Wake Forest knew that's where they were going. Yeah, Malik Mustafa made a nice play. He's playing the inside safety. Tried to lull him to sleep, change of pace. He beat the corner, but the safety was there. They bracketed him right there at the goal line. And that was Mustafa who knocked the ball away. He's the replacement for Gavin Holmes, who's in the locker room, probably having an x-ray. That's what Dave Clawson talked about. He said, we'll give up a lot of yards. But we think red zone defense is very important. They are good at it. They force a field goal by Atkins from 23 yards. Third down defense, red zone defense, turnovers. That's been the formula of their success defensively. Time for today's Aflac trivia question. An early Wake Forest is ranked in the AP top 10 this week for the first time in school history. They want to know which Power 5 team has gone the longest without being in the top 10. One other note about that. They were the only Power 5 team that had never been ranked in the top 10. 
Now all the Power Five teams have been ranked in the top ten at least once, but for some of them, it has been a long time. Here's a hint. We'll give you a hint for one. Is a number one is, has a very similar color scheme of their uniforms to Wake to Forest. Wake Forest mm -hmm. See if you can figure that one out. That's a good hint. Jonathan Kim, 88% touchback percentage. Starting today, fourth best in the country, and there's another. Well, we, we know the answer, because they showed this to us last night at our production meeting. Which Power 5 team's gone the longest without being in the top 10? Vanderbilt. Back to 1947. That was the previous best start that same year for Wake Forest, by the way. They were 7-0 in 47, which was their best start before this year when they went 8-0. Matt, you noticed that we brushed past the Harvard of Central New York thing on that graphic, Syracuse University. Justice Ellison out to the 29 to pick up a four. You know, Syracuse, quite honestly, and watching that film, may have played this Wake Forest offense as good as anybody. They, they lost the game in overtime, had a chance to win the game, but they did a really nice job defending and taking away the deep throws from this Wake Forest offense in that overtime loss. Justice Ellison, the ball carrier. Well, Syracuse is a five-win team, one from bowl eligibility, but that's one that sticks with Orange Nation. That could have been in the win column. Uh, the Clemson game, they had a chance at the end. Could be a much better year for the Harvard of Central New York. Hartland carries for a first down to the 36. They went with the quick count again, trying to, to fool them with the, the pace. And that time, Hartman, instead of going right behind the center, kind of bounced it out behind the left tackle. Just kind of found a crease, got the first down, just heads up play by a veteran quarterback in Sam Hartman. They fake the run again, and it's dropped by A.T. Perry. Tried to run. Tried to run before he secured the catch. Hartman did a great job hanging in there. The back, Ellison did a great job picking up pressure. And just watch, he's going to turn his head a little bit. He wants to run after the catch. He's been tremendous lately. Three straight 100-yard receiving games. Had 116 last week in their win against Duke, which got them to 8-0. Oh. Run on second and ten, and it yielded five from Justice Ellison. Talking about that Syracuse win, A.T. Perry in that game had three catches. All three were for touchdowns, 137 yards. Every time he caught the ball was for a touchdown, including the game winner. With 146 receiving at Army. Nice catch made by A.T. Perry right on cue. They didn't quite give him the yardage necessary for the first down. See if they go quick again. They've done it on fourth and one a couple times. This time looks like they're going to be a little bit more deliberate in their play call, change personnel, bring their other second tight end in, Brandon Chapman, who's a little bit more physical than Blake Whitehart. As they substituted, Carolina given time to get its sub on the field. Now, Devontae Gordon, the right tackle, definitely moved, but if he moved in reaction to a defender coming across the line, it's going to be offsides against North Carolina. That looked to be what happened from our vantage point. Offside, defense number 25. Five-yard penalty. The penalty results in a first down. Came in Rucker. Critical penalty. Well, we've seen Sam Hartman do a couple things on fourth and short. Quarterback sneak on a quick count twice and that time a hard count or a hard clap to draw the offsides penalty. Aquarius Conley number zero jumped. Pump fake Hartman trying to go deep for Morin. Locks a pump in. He still made the catch. Wow have we seen some brands today with the fender just draped all over receivers. This guy is not very big. I mean, he's 5'10", 176 pounds, but he plays bigger. Defense number 20. The penalty will be declined. The result of the play was a catch. First down. 
We've already seen the touchdown catch. This is a contested catch. Good coverage, tight coverage, penalty, and just no lack of concentration by Morin, who hauls it in. Nice throw by Sam Hartman, giving him a chance. But that is just wonderful concentration by the receiver, Morin. A 29-yard gain. Down the seam, Stewart. Didn't see it coming, or Roberson, I should say, didn't see it coming. And Conley upset that he didn't pick it off. Oh, almost looked like it got tipped at the line of scrimmage. It, it, it looked like it went on a different course. Certainly was different than where the receiver was running. Second and ten, they're in field goal range. Wake Forest leading by four. They run a quarterback draw. Effectively so. Touchdown, Sam Hartman. yard score and this is perfect now watch this linebacker is going to blitz here the backs going in motion he's going there they pull the tackle around to block here perfect execution and timing they clear out the middle the tackle Zach Tom gets the block on the other side linebacker and Hartman goes untouched into the end zone it's one of those anything you can do Sam I can do better mm -hmm. <laughs> There's two Sam H's, Hartman and Howell, buddies, as we said, both from the Charlotte area. They've worked out together in offseason. Saw them visiting on the field before the game. Right down to the beard, they are a yeah. lot alike. Not afraid to rush the ball. They're over 35 again for the ninth straight game. They're the only team in the country to score at least 35 in every one of their games this season. Zach Tom, the left tackle, was shaken up. He went off. They just put so much pressure on them. Be because you know they, they're going to run the football and they're committed to running the football but as soon as you get too aggressive on the run they're going to throw it over your head and they've got outstanding receivers all over so it doesn't matter where the ball goes ski to the extra point you're watching college football presented by arby's Truthfully, it's frustrating to see how fast dust reappears. But dusting with a cloth is a pain. And dealing with a bulky vacuum is such a... ...student section sauce. To get the committee's attention, go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Molly McGrath in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Number nine, Wake Forest has opened up an 11-point lead. With nine and a half to go in the third quarter. Ivan Moore, the punter, is their kickoff man, and that'll be another touchback. Oh, we mentioned Wake Forest, number nine in the first edition of the college football ranking. Came out this week. Brought to you by Allstate. Let's take a look at the rest of it. Georgia, number one, and we're going to hammer that home today against Missouri in Athens, but a lot of important games later on today, including that Michigan State at Purdue game. Purdue's shown that it can knock off yeah. highly ranked teams. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see just the mindset of Michigan State, how they bounce back after the huge win at home against Michigan a week ago. Green to Downs, and he swung down by Jasir Taylor. I still think Cincinnati, I, I don't know how they're number six. No, I don't either. I, mean, I, I think the committee really whiffed on that. I think they, they won a Notre Dame. Yeah. yeah, I know their schedule hasn't been all that great, but... Well, but you can look at them and watch them play and tell them realize they're good, that they're which legit. is what the committee's expertise is supposed to be. You know, that they're, they're a bunch of people who can get it done with the eye test. Here's a deep throw, and it's too far for Antoine Green. They might want to go to Nippert Stadium and watch a game in person or find them when they're on the road. We saw them last year. Well, they were also excellent. It's not their fault. Indiana turned out to not be as good as everybody thought they were going to be. But the playoff predictor basically said if they win out, they will probably be in the playoff. But I say if they're not in the playoff, then let's go to 8 or 12 immediately. Because it would be a joke if they went undefeated and didn't get in the playoff. And not a funny one. Howell pulls it down. Getting closer and closer to the all-time total offense mark. 
Might be able to do it if they extend this drive. Record held by Marquise Williams, quarterback here about a decade ago. North Carolina has to find it. You know, we should make this no. We're talking about Sam Hartman, this Wake Forest offense. This this North Carolina offense last week in South Bend gained 564 yards against Notre Dame. And right now, they are under 300. It's 296 total yards. A lot of football left. But Wake Forest defense, not overpowering, but plays well in certain aspects of the game defensively. 45-yard punt by Kiernan. It feels like Wake Forest is starting to take control. But then again, as we mentioned, they, they had a... Big lead right. last year in the second half gave up 35 unanswered points. This is a different year, different team. Now we had a visit from Jim Phillips, who's the commissioner of the ACC, who's here today. Very busy man. He's right. going to be at the game in Louisville tonight. It's been reported that the ACC is not in favor of going to 12 teams in the playoff. And he said that's absolutely not true. He just thinks that the idea needs to be discussed yeah, in greater detail. But they are in favor of expansion because Wake Forest is another team that might get left out. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think if they're undefeated. Offside, defense number 10. Five-yard penalty, first down. You'd like to think they'd get in. It hasn't happened that an undefeated Power Five Conference champion has made the playoff. They've all made it. There's a lot for Dave Clawson's team to do, but I think they're making a positive impression on national TV I today. I totally agree. Christian Turner for a first down. And you and I have talked about this before. Is there a more underrated, underappreciated, great coach in college football than Dave Clawson? I don't think so. Have you watched this team play? Right? You know, everything that we've talked about all day long is indicative of a well-coached team. They don't turn it over. They don't commit penalties. They have a man wide open. They have beautiful play design. Perry stumbled a bit. Will they catch him? He dives for the pylon and scores. There's a flag back near the line of scrimmage along the near sideline. Again, this is what they do with their play action, the slow mesh. They dare you to be aggressive. They dare you to come up and be tough against the run. Watch. Watch this safety as this fake takes so long, he just can't help himself but to come up. And as soon as he takes two steps up, A.T. Perry runs right by him, and that's an easy throw and catch for Wake Forest. They just continue to do the same thing, and when you get too aggressive or get out of position, Sam Hartman makes you pay, as we see it from the progressive pylon <laughs> camp. We sure do. Soaring to the pylon cam. 66 yard play, 35 after the catch, and that gives A.T. Perry his fourth straight 100 yard receiving game. Five catches, 123, and two touchdowns today for A.T. Perry. And for Sam Perry, or for Sam Hartman, his fifth game of throwing over 300 yards in a row as well. Coming up 4 Eastern today over on ACC Network, number 19, NC State takes on Florida State. And immediately following that game, Clemson and Louisville. Commissioner Jim Phillips will be there. Jim Phillips is a busy man through uh, nine weeks of college football. He's been to 17 games. Wow. There's Jim. He was in Syracuse yesterday for the ACC Field Hockey Championships. Former athletic director at Northwestern, replaced the legendary John Swaffer's commissioner of the ACC. And I think an excellent choice. He's a sharp guy. Very sharp. Very sharp. And as he pointed out, you know, when, anytime you have discussions about college football playoff expansion, you also have to take into consideration and have serious discussions about how many games you want to play, player safety, player health, the academic calendar. There's Ty Chandler. They need a big play, and Carolina gets one from the running back out across the 40 for a 17-yard run. It's been one of their best plays. They they pull the unblocked or the uncovered center in the backside tackle. A little slower developing play, but 
this this af this offensive line for North Carolina it's a veteran group and they're very athletic they can move their feet leading the way for Chandler another good run they're sticking with the ground game even down by 18 now biggest deficit either team has faced today exact same play just the other way that was the center Johnson and Richards the left tackle pulling out from that two runs exact same play both for excellent yardage Nothing there for Chandler. But again, what this Wake Forest defense has done, Lyle Hemphill, the defensive coordinator, they, they give up yards, right? They give up a lot of yards between the 20s or between the 30s, but then when it comes to situations, they come up with turnovers, they come up with sacks, they come up with red zone stops, third down stops. It's part of why they're undefeated. Howell. Flush from the pocket. Tried to set and throw. Instead, decided to carry it. Got a gain of three. And to your point, Todd, what Coach Hempel said and Dave Clawson said, they don't pay any attention to total yards right. given up, total defense. They're not good in that. They're a hundredth in the country. And Dave Clawson said, we play so fast on offense and we score so frequently that our defense is going to be on the field for more plays. We'll probably play 8 to 12 plays more than almost any other team in the country on defense right. because the offense gets off the field so fast. Now juggling catch. Inside the 30-yard line, it's Kamari Morales, the tight end. Nice pocket that time for Powell to step up into. With that completion of 11 yards, Sam Howell is now number one all-time in total offense in North Carolina football history. Move past Marquise Williams, quarterback here from 2012 through 15. 10,429 yards of total offense for Howell, six more than Williams. Already the all-time passing yardage leader. Trying to throw a touchdown pass, and he does. Antoine Green, the catch. First touchdown pass of the day for Sam Howell. And that is 34 straight games with a TD throw. All 34 of his career, extending the longest active streak in college football. And they're going to go for two here with just under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Boy, these two quarterbacks are fun. Uh, we saw Sam Hartman read a corner blitz and get the ball out for a touchdown. That time, Sam Howe saw a safety blitz and threw the opposite side, knew he had man coverage. Take a look at this now. Sam Howe is going to know that he's got a safety blitz, full pressure. He sees it coming, and he knows he's got one-on-one -on -one out here. And this is against Zion Keith, number 28. Remember Gavin Holmes, one of the starting corners, out for the rest of the game. He goes right at Zion Keith. And Antoine Green gets the touchdown. Slight underthrow. Receiver has a chance, goes up, gets the ball. But he read the blitz. He had it picked up. He got rid of the football. And we've seen both of the quarterbacks today make those kind of decisions and plays. And what a career for Sam Howell. And to watch him play with the kind of grit and toughness this year and running the football is incredible. Sam's done this in three years. Freshman here in the ACC. He had a tremendous season as a freshman. Threw 38 touchdown passes in 2019. And only seven interceptions. I mean, for a freshman to have that kind of touchdown interception ratio is pretty impressive. 88th career touchdown pass, adding to his Carolina record. One of the best of all time in the ACC. Wide open, they get the two. They had to burn a timeout to do it. There's Walston, the catch. There's a flag down. I think they're going to get the center for holding, but it really is kind of a chintzy call. Offense number 69. It's, it's kind of chintzy because the defender just kind of submarined the center. 
and all he did was basically fall on top of him. Watch what happens. The defender right in the middle is just going to go submarine under the center. I mean, that uh, you can't call holding there. He's not going to get to the quarterback. That's terrible. Well-conceived play, well-designed play. Garrett Walston wide open. Yeah, he's explaining, you're right. Kieran Johnson, or walk-on, become their starting center. Now be Atkins. Still an important point. Gets him within 11. I don't think you know, Mac Brown told us yesterday he sent a lot of films into the ACC officiating office this year. That'll probably be another one. Well, it was more just a reaction to knock him down with his hands, but nonetheless, Sam Howell in the history books, pretty good company. Some great quarterbacks this league has put out. Well, as we mentioned, I think the North Carolina people believe this will be his final season. Uh, he will probably move past yep. maybe all but Taj Boyd before the season is over. Of course, they're playing for bowl eligibility. They're four and four right now. That's his dad, Duke, who was a high school coach, got out of coaching so he could come watch Sam play regularly. Sam told us yesterday his dad might go back to coaching. But Sam goes on to pro football. Jonathan Kim kicks off. Keyshawn Williams makes the fair catch. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Short time now for our celebration moment brought to you by Allstate. A JT Daniels sighting in the Georgia offense book. Yeah, it wants the starting quarterback now back up to Stetson Bennett throwing a TD. Dogs rolling right now up 40 to 3 at home against Mizzou. Later on, reminding our audience less than an hour away from the Kenneth Walker the show. Michigan State number three in the land on the road at Purdue, favored by three. Back to you, Sean. There's Kenneth Walker, former Wake Forest Demon Deacon, was with them last year. I asked Sam Hartman about that. He said they were happy for Walker, but he said, I wouldn't trade the, the three guys I have carrying the load for me for anybody. Great effort there by Christian Beale Smith for a five yard game. You know, and, and I think that what they have this year is kind of part and parcel of what this team is about. Very unselfish group. I mean, they, they, you know, they don't care who gets the, the most carries, the glory. You have three running backs. So the, the negative is none of them get to be a star. The positive is you're going to have fresh legs all through the game. And, and you're going to be able to lean on that running game with fresh backs in fourth quarters. Hartman. Nice move after the catch. Keyshawn Williams, the freshman from Philadelphia, with enough for the first down. And that was one of the things Dave Clawson has tried to build. He said, in recent years, sometimes there were players who were more about me than we. Right. He said, this year we have a team filled with players. It's about we, not me. Sam Hartman. And it looks like he has a first down. And to be clear, he didn't say that about Kenneth Walker. No, no, just he actually was talking about it more about his 2019 team. Yes, you know? the one that started seven and one. Yeah. Got a little caught up, he thought, in it. Second time we've seen Sam Hartman pull that, fake the inside zone read, influence the defense, and keep the football. Hartman got hit up high, stayed on his feet, throws a punt down the field <laughs> point through that a long way in the air almost 60 65 yards trying to get it to donald stewart and tyler mcmichael had coverage thought he got hit in the face there he he probably could have called that then he just launched it could have called that too ball hung up in there boy they get a lot of those one-on-one -on -one situations with post routes where they really isolate defensive backs and they just keep the pressure on you Hartman sings one short completion to A.T. Perry See, let me ask you this question sorry Todd Go ahead. Sam Hartman Heisman Trophy candidate why not 
Why not is right. I, again, I, I think the Heisman, you should start really talking seriously about it in November because that's when the games that really matter come up. And he is playing outstanding football on an undefeated football team. He came in averaging 309 passing yards per game, number 10 in the country. He's already passed that today. His parents, Mark and Lisa, looking on. We've seen that he's a running threat as well. Very accurate, doesn't turn it over much. Makes a great decision to run here. There is a flag down. Two Tar Heels collide out of bounds on the far sideline. And you know, to that point, Sean, I don't think Kenneth Walker III was a legitimate, really Heisman guy until he played the game he did against Michigan. The, the way they play in the big games. first down. I know for me, as, as a Heisman voter, I want to see how guys play in the biggest games, the most meaningful, most important games. And that's, how your those team games does happen now. supposed to, I guess, has something to do with it. It really isn't supposed to. If you're right. the best player, you're the best player. But as we said earlier, a lot of people took Sam Howell out of the Heisman talk after the very first game of the season when they lost to Virginia Tech. But Sam Hartman's team's 8 0. Right. Has an excellent chance to get to 9 0. They're the only offense in college football that has scored 35 points or more every single game. And he's running the show. The, the average is 15.8 per completion, number eight in the country. 9.9 .9 yards per pass attempt, number four in the country. Touchdown pass in 10 straight games. And this is not the easiest offense to run. They're just managing this slow mesh is unusual. We asked him to explain it to you yesterday. He said, I really can't. <laughs> it's very Offense hard to put 55, in words. 10 yard penalty to second down. Another hold on Michael Jurgens, the center. Flag day for Jeff Flanagan and his crew today. Basically, what they try to do with this offense and with this run game is it's a deliberate run game, and they try to get double teams up front. Jurgens is blocking one on one, he's the one guilty of the hold. Clearly holding. But they try to maintain these double team blocks and then they use the play action pass off of every run action that they have. And it just, they lull you to sleep a little bit to either pop a run or throw one over the top of your head. The leading rusher, Christian Beal Smith, is the injured player, Redshirt Jr. from Winston-Salem, which is where Wake Forest is located. talk about Heisman Trophy candidacies. How about this? <laughs> Five straight games now with a 300 plus. In the last 15 years in the ACC, only two other quarterbacks have done that. Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson. They're not bad. Not too shabby. I really enjoy talking with Sam, both Sams, but when we talked to Sam Hartman the other day and he was talking to us about just, you know, some of the things he's really worked on off the field from a mental aspect, a mental approach, and, and, and talking about very candidly just about mental health and about dealing with anxiety and tension and some of the pressure he's felt at other times in his career. And, you know, he's worked with, uh, you know, therapists and, and sports psychologists and really tried to get on the other side of that and how much better he feels and feels like he's playing because of it. He said he used to get stressed and it would affect other people around him. He said not just in football, but in his personal life right. as well. And Relationships. He's yep. learned how to deal with stress. He said breathing is a big part of it. We've seen him several times stay on the sideline, almost look like he's trying to take deep breaths and relax. And he, he, he volunteered that really yeah, as did. a way to say to us, I think people should take advantage of the opportunity to yeah. address whatever it might be from a mental standpoint that can improve the quality of their life. So it's really helped them on and off the field. They bring a blitz at him. Conley didn't get him. Hartman throws on the run. Keyshawn Williams shoved out of bounds inside the 25. Well, I thought his best description of it was, he says, you know, as an athlete, as a player, you, you want to be like a fine-tuned machine, a well-oiled machine, and the breathing is like that good oil and tension.
tension and anxiety is like rust on the, on the machine or on the engine. And, uh, I was very impressed with how he put that. Surrounded has the ball batted down by Miles Murphy, a sophomore defensive lineman out of Greensboro. And Jay Payton, the coordinator, says is the most talented player on this North Carolina defense. Big third down stop right there. Murphy got the knocked the ball down to and Timon uh, Fox knocked the quarterback down. So they got a hit on the quarterback and they forced the field goal attempt. By Nick Skiba. Be a 42 yard try. And it is good. Shocking that he missed one last week. He has made 24 in a row. He missed a little chip shot against Duke, 26 yards. Skiba, back in 2018 and 2019, made 34 in a row, the NCAA record. Let's check in down on the field. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, you guys were talking about Sam Hartman working on the mental side of his game and the deep breathing he does. When I've been watching him on the sidelines, he paces more than any quarterback I've ever seen in college football, and he stops and takes really deep, slow breaths. He even talks to himself a little bit, and he talks to himself and takes moments to himself more than he does with his teammates he's very quiet and kind of in his own head on the sidelines a lot of quarterbacks are a little more raw raw getting in guys faces but Hartman is very quiet and focused on these sidelines yeah I definitely noticed that he you know even from our vantage point that he spends a lot of time kind of by himself just walking behind the bench and of course Molly you have an even better view of it but uh, very interesting but it, obviously whatever it is he's doing is working and working well for him Even more to kick off again. And Chandler takes a knee. They'll bring it out to the 25. How about a college basketball is here. The season will tip off Tuesday. What a great lineup on ESPN. The women's hoop matchup of the day is at 5 Eastern, number one. South Carolina, coached by the brilliant Don Staley, takes on fifth-ranked NC State. Then to the Champions Classic at Madison Square Garden. Game one is Kansas against Michigan State. Then they'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25. And then the nightcap of the Champions Classic, Kentucky and Duke. Great way to start college hoop season. Deep throw for Olsen. And it's broken up. To see her Taylor. I, I'm, I'm surprised that that did not draw a flag. Now, I know that you don't have to, there's no face guarding penalty, but Jasir Taylor has no idea where the ball is, and I think he makes contact as the ball's getting there. Obviously, has no idea where the ball, but to me, that's pass interference. Matt Austin from his palatial home nodding his head in agreement with you, Todd. Crowd seen a couple of replays, and they're booing as well. Know, and, and North Carolina, Sean, you, you almost get the feeling they have to answer here, right? They, they've got to stay no question. within uh, striking distance at and seven a touchdown. points. Yes. Field goals yeah, no go out field. the window now. They're down 14. They need a touchdown. They need to hang right in there as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Because their defense is going to struggle the rest of the game stopping Wake Forest. DJ Jones carry for seven. Howell. Quick pass and down, slipped down. And got hit by Zion Keith. The crowd didn't like that either. Downs is the nephew of Drake Lyle, who was a great defensive back here and is now their cornerbacks yep. coach. Just a sophomore, little guy. They list him at 5'10. He admitted to Molly McGrath he's not 5'10. A little under that. Howell on the final play of the quarter runs across the 40. Christian Beal Smith with the boot around his left, excuse me, his right leg. Terrible news for Wake Forest. 
They lead by 14. Our coverage on ABC will return after this message in order from our ABC stations. We'll be followed here on ABC by number three Michigan State against Purdue. Dangerous game off that emotional win over Michigan. It's a very good Purdue team. Oklahoma State, West Virginia. The Oregon Washington game will be fun tonight, too. Those teams do not care for each other. They've done that game a few times in recent years. It is a heated rivalry. Chase Jones throws down Sam Howell. Didn't quite get to the first down marker. It's now 17 carries for Sam Howell. Um, they told us. Phil Longo said my first his first two years we didn't run him that much we didn't have a lot of depth at quarterback we've got depth at quarterback <laughs> this year <laughs> good for you Sam you get to run more he says he likes running ran a lot in high school but he is running the football a lot it was Sam Howell also said last year when they had NFL players are running back in depth at running back they didn't need to run Howell right. he throws for a first down to Antoine Green Yes, better to give it to Javante Williams and Michael Carter, right? Yes. Instead of the quarterback run. Do you think Phil Longo said that to Sam Howell? You know what? We really don't care <laughs> if you get beat up because we have two really good quarterbacks behind you. I'm not sure he explained it the same way to Sam that he did to us. <laughs> Sam is loving it. He asked him this, did you like running the ball? I love it. Both quarterbacks said that. And Howell is uh, four yards away from another 100-yard rushing game, which will be his fifth this season. Ty Chandler in awake territory. Second down and two. Chandler now their leading rusher. He's over 100 for the third time this season with 104 on 13 carries, eight per carry. They fake the handoff to Chandler. Howell launches it out of bounds. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, at halftime, Mac Brown told me this game would come down to them making big plays in the passing game down the stretch. And Wake Forest is without three crucial DBs right now. Gavin Holmes is out after having x-rays on his left hand and wrist. Kalen Carson is back in the locker room for evaluation after them looking at his shoulder and neck area. And Malik Mustafa on the sideline treated for right leg injury. Well, that depth that Dave Clawson is excited about getting put to the test. Remember, they also lost Christian Beal-Smith on their way to the locker room, one of their talented running backs. Saw the freshman Gavin Holmes with that left hand and wrist already wrapped up. He did bend it very awkwardly. Howell enough to move the chains on the completion to Kamari Morales. If this goes, hopefully this will be against both teams and not one. Uh, number two on the defense. Number two's first. The sports will like conduct foul. Penalty's 15 yards. First down. I mean, it was Ty Chandler and the defender. I mean, it was two guys. They both were involved. That you always say, well, it's always the second guy who gets caught. To me, that's that should be unsportsmanlike both ways. And just go ahead and play the next down. Matt, did you see anything there you'd like to add to? Well, I agree with Todd. The uh, North Carolina player had a handful of his jersey, wasn't letting go, and all the guy did was swipe his hand away. So I would like nothing there, to be yeah, honest with you. That'd be the best. And Chandler could not escape. Excellent penetration by Miles Fox. Transfer from Old Dominion. Got an undergraduate degree there, and then came to Wake Forest. We'll just take a look. Quick penetration. Got right past the center and right guard. The guy who's played a lot of football. What they tell us his seventh year, right? <laughs> Old Dominion. And, I mean, there's there's a lot of guys like that in college football, right? That are getting a seventh year, sixth year, the COVID year, the super seniors. He missed all of 2019 with a torn Achilles. Suffered in practice. With the comeback player of the year in the ACC last year. Nice throw by Howell. And the catch by Morales. They're poised to make this a one-score game with a long way to go if they can get it in the end zone. 
This is, again, this is where Wake Forest has kind of bowed their neck a little bit in the red zone. But again, Sam Howell knows we have got to stay, we got to keep in pace. We got to stay one touchdown away from these guys. We overtook them by 21 points last year, but this is a better Wake Forest team this year that we're dealing with. Four down territory, you would think. That's a moot point as Chandler's run. in the end zone. Tough run by Ty Chandler. 13 yards, and it is a one-score game with a long way to go in Chapel Hill. And now, more than just some whooping after the touchdown. Well, really good blocking at the point of attack on the touchdown. Jordan Tucker, the right tackle. And Antoine Green, the wide receiver, did an excellent job of converting his route and then becoming a blocker. He was the key block down near the goal line. Well, there have already been 17 accepted penalties in this game. Well, the flag was thrown well before any of this happened. There's the block by Antoine Cool. Green. I think it was that late polish there yeah, by Jordan over Tucker top on Isaiah Wingfield okay. that got it started. Yeah, the flag the is going to be touchdown. for the for After the taunting. On sportsmanlike conduct, taunting number 72 on the offense. Yeah. 74. Excuse me, number 74. We'll Four. You. There you go. That's number 74's first on sportsmanlike conduct foul. The penalty will be enforced on the try. Well, that's big as it makes it a tougher extra point as they try to get within seven. Now, Jordan Tucker made a nice block on the play, but then just got carried away at the end of the play. And, you know, penalties, this has kind of been the norm for North Carolina. There are eight penalties. That's kind of been where they've been most games. It's really uncharacteristic for Wake Forest at this point to have nine penalties in the game for almost 100 yards of yardage. Here's Grayson Atkins. What is the equivalent of a 35-yard field goal? We'll only get one point if he can knock this extra point through. NFL extra point try, and he nailed it. Excellent kicker transfer from Furman. So another nice day for Chandler. Averaging 7.6 per carry. He's been in the end zone twice. And it is a seven-point game. Look at it from the progressive pylon camp. 11.22 to go. Today tastes like a new tradition. 11.22 to go here at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Wake Forest trying to go to 9-0 in the season. North Carolina trying to get to five and four. It's a touchback from Jonathan Kim. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, Minnesota was undefeated in October. New month, new result. Tanner Morgan picked off here by Kirby Joseph. And how about Illinois, Boga? Two touchdown underdog getting the upset on the road. Great game plan. Only 10 passes, 46 runs. The fighting Bielemans know how to win, Kev. 14 to six. David Bell, the Purdue star, leading the Big Ten in receiving yards, getting ready to host number three Michigan State on ABC. And the numbers from this year's 8 0 team eerily similar to what we saw in 2015. Yes, hopefully the result in 2015 doesn't rear his head again this year. Oh, that was not pretty. <laughs> that was not pretty in the uh, Final Four college football playoff. Back to you, Sean. All right, Kevin, thank you. A little game pressure now on Wake Forest. Lead back to one score. It's Christian Turner driven back by Tamari Fox after a gain of only one. Well, Sam Hartman has had a heck of a ball game, and he can't afford to take his foot off the gas. I mean, he's over 330 yards passing, four touchdowns. They got to keep the pressure on. Plenty of time on second and nine. Throws over the middle, incomplete. Trying to get it to Brandon Chapman. Cameron Kelly there in coverage. Now, this has been a pretty quiet crowd, but right now, if North Carolina gets a stop here, this place will be as loud as it's been all afternoon. They're coming to life. Third down and nine. 
Wake is six out of 13 on third down. Hartman stepped up in the pocket, throws an interception. Picked off by Kelly again. And he brings it back to the 21 yard line. Well, for the second time in a row, Cam Kelly, they're in zone defense. Third and long. Cam Kelly is going to be the top of the right of your screen. He's got eyes on the quarterback. He's the outside defender, and he just cuts right in front of the intended receiver. When you play zone, you eyes the quarterback. When you play man, your eyes are on the receiver. And for the second time in this ballgame, Cam Kelly, reading the eyes of Sam Hartman, picks him off, and this time returns it deep into North Carolina territory, or into Wake Forest territory. Two interceptions today. Four for the season for Kelly, junior from Chesapeake, Virginia, and a transfer from Auburn. Herman came in having thrown only three picks all year. Oh boy, how almost threw it right back to him. DJ Taylor had his hands on it, batted it up in the air, couldn't haul it in. Yeah, he's looking outside at his receiver, Antoine Green, and did not see the inside linebacker coming towards the ball. Very lucky that one wasn't picked off. Chandler with blockers. Ty Chandler, another touchdown. Wake Forest has had so much trouble defending that run. It's the old counter trap. Pulling the center who's uncovered instead of the guard in the backside tackle. And Ty Chandler running with authority. For the tie, Grayson Atkins. When you think about that two point play that North Carolina scored on, they got called back for a questionable holding call. Three touchdown runs, a career high for Ty Chandler. They pulled the center, they pulled the tackle. Now watch. The tackle, you want to see some athleticism. Watch 74, Jordan Tucker. He gets all the way to the safety ahead of the back to get a block. I mean, they just caved that side. Now, look at this big man get down the field and get right into the safety and tie Chandler into the end zone again. Jamie Red just <laughs> ducked out of the way. He said, You win on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan Tucker's. Six, six and a half, 340 pounds. Senior from Roswell, Georgia, making his 31st career start. So last year, Carolina came from 21 down to beat Wake Forest. They rallied from 14 down here in the fourth quarter to tie the game with still 10 and a half to go. It was 45 21, a 24 rather, Wake. Last year, with seven minutes left in the third quarter, Carolina went on the explosion. Sam Howell led the way. 35 unanswered points in 17 minutes and four seconds. Largest comeback in North Carolina history. From 21 back. Well, the biggest story of this game right now. Coming into the game, Wake Forest plus 10 in turnover margin. One of the best in the country. And they're minus one in the ball game so far today. Hartman hits his pass on first down. A lot of time left for sure. Corey Roberson, good for 15 yards. The biggest lead today for Wake was 45-27. With just under five left in the third quarter. Sam Hartman looked around. He's across the line of scrimmage. Now a flag is thrown. A lot of referees in the stands thought they saw a holding call, and apparently the referee, Jeff Flanagan, did too. Ten-yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, they got the tight end, Blake Whitehart, 
as the quarterback left the pocket, and this happens all the time. A defender goes to make a play, and the blocker just instinctively is going to reach out and grab. Watch. He doesn't know where the quarterback is. He thinks he's in the pocket, and then when Hartman leaves, his guy takes off after him, and there's the grab that allowed Hartman to get to the corner. And a handful of power echoes, the freshman. He's seen a lot more playing time than expected today with the disqualification for targeting of their defensive leader, Jeremiah Gimmel. Under 10 minutes to go. Wake Forest trying to continue the best start in school history. Here's Justice Ellison down the sideline and shoved out of bounds. Inside the 40, they'll mark it at the 36. See, again, this offense and this, this slow mesh, this run can pop anywhere. It's an inside run, but Ellison sees the end open up and busts it all the way out the backside. But that patience and waiting allows him to see where he wants to run the football. 35 yards. They're on the edge of field goal range. They're without Christian Beal Smith, their leading rusher. He went to the locker room with a boot on his right leg. Ellison again, freshman from Ashburn, Virginia. Got them to the 32. Ellison again, the motto for this Wake Forest team. Good to great. Dave Blossom said, we've been good a lot lately. They've been in a bowl game each of the last five years. We haven't had that breakthrough season. If they're going to have it this year, they likely need to reclaim the lead here and go on and win. Ellison, the freshman, thrust into the spotlight without Christian Beal Smith. He got popped down by Cedric Gray, two yards short of the line to me. Well, that time they set the edge. On the long run, the 30-plus yard run, North Carolina did not set the edge. That time, Cedric Gray did. They're going for it on fourth down and two. Right, the hard count again. Four-man rush. They're throwing, and it gets batted down. Raymond Vohasek in the middle of that defensive line. Remember, the quarterback does not get very deep in the play-action game that Wake Forest runs. Vohasek knows that. All he needs is a little push. Here he is. Watch him get a little bit of push and then a big hand up to knock the ball away on fourth down. What a stop by the Hart Tar Heel defense. They're getting in the first half. Still very much involved on that sideline, cheering the knockdown by Raymond Vohasek that has turned the ball back over to North Carolina, trying to take the lead now for the first time since the second quarter. And they were up 21 to 17. Ty Chandler ahead for a couple. If you joined us later, early on, it was back and forth. They were matching scores. There were six lead changes. Since then, Wake Forest seemed to be pretty comfortably in yep. control. Big turnover. Hartman's second interception thrown to Cameron Kelly today. And Carolina scored immediately thereafter to tie it. Now taking over on downs, they can take the lead. Lawson decided to forego the field goal try with one of the best kickers in the history of college football. Ty Chandler chopped down by Nasir Greer. Now the running game of North Carolina behind this offensive line that is playing with more and more confidence as this season has gone on. They weren't, weren't really good when the season started. They thought it would be a strength. They did not play well early. They had some problems with injury at center. But they are coming on, and now at 255 yards rushing in the ball game, they've got this Wake Forest defense on their heels a little bit. Third down and four. What do you expect? Quarterback draw. And it's the first time. I'm a little surprised that Wake Forest wasn't a bit more prepared for that. I mean, they love that play in key situations. Well, it's not an easy play to defend because you've got an extra blocker with the back and you release one of the linemen who's uncovered onto a linebacker. You still have to cover the receivers, but Hartman, I mean, 
Hal just has a really good feel for running that play, and he has good timing with it. They have converted on six straight third downs now. D.J. Jones couldn't break free from Luke Masterson. He's been a good player for a long time. Sixth year super senior out of Naples, Florida. Right now, if you have D.J. Jones in the game, the one thing you got to be concerned about is just take care of the football. Make sure you hold on to the football. Remember, there was a strip of Ty Chandler early in the ball game, first possession, that led to a Wake Forest, the initial score of the game. Fake the handoff to Dallas. That's a live they ball. throw. That would look like a lateral. Yep. It's a live ball, and then he's thrown down. A terrible play by Zion Keith. Downs was well out of bounds, and Keith just slammed him to the ground. Well, first of all, it was a smart heads-up play by Josh Downs to pick up the football. Whether he thought it was a lateral or not, you've got to assume that it is. After the player was out of bounds, personal foul, number 28 defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't make this mistake. Number one, it's in the white, clearly, and number two, it's on the North Carolina sideline. I mean, there's just... <laughs> that That's always going to draw a flag, and... Again, very uncharacteristic. Most of this game has been characteristic of Wake Forest. Ten penalties for 104 yards, not characteristic. Nineteen penalties accepted in this game combined. Here's some more trickery. Downs back to Howell. Zings one for a first down. Antoine Green to the 36-yard line of Wake Forest for a 13-yard play. Well, you got a bunch set, so here's the receiver, and the tight end's gonna go slow and release down the field. But they held up the tight end. That was the deep option. He came underneath to Antoine Green, which was the second read. Good decision by Sam Howe on the trick play. Don't force it down the field if it's not there. Howell's thrown for 216, rushed for 102. Chandler has already scored three times. Ty Chandler inside the 15. Guess what play it was? The counter trap, center backside tackle. Wake Forest has not had an answer for it. The athleticism of the North Carolina offensive line running those kind of counter plays has been the difference here. 279 yards rushing now as a team. Ty Chandler, 163, and averaging over eight and a half yards every time he carries it. His career high, the only game he's ever rushed for more than today, was 198 back in September against Virginia. So please reset the clock to four minutes and 30 seconds, please. It will start on my signal. Well, that's now important because all of a sudden that clock is an issue, yes. as you can see. They're in field goal range at the very least. Wake does have all three of its timeouts. But Dave Clawson's team, uncharacteristic turnovers and penalties, and in trouble. Will they blow a big lead for the second year in a row against North Carolina? Howell spun forward by Miles Fox as he made the tackle to the seven-yard line. It looked like Miles Fox was trying to rip the ball out as Sam Howell was slow to get off the field. And that enabled Howell to get closer to that first down marker, but of more concern is the health and well-being of Sam Howell. He lost a shoe in the hands of Luke Masterson. Gordon Ramsay. This is a call. NFL teams are turning to Pierce to be okay, but he has to stay out for a play. So welcome to the game. Jacoby Criswell with a tie game with under four minutes to go. Sophomore from Arkansas, highly recruited. He was the Gatorade Player of the Year in high school in Arkansas. 
Or they just give him a nice safe play. On second and three. Yes, they do. A handoff to Chandler. He gets one. And here comes Howell. I think Sam just got the wind knocked out of him. You know, the one thing that Criswell did pretty well there, and he was coached up on the sideline, is they, they wanted to use clock, too. He did not snap the ball quickly. Right now, the clock is your friend. You are already in great scoring position. If you convert here on third down, you can eat up even more time. So Sam Howell will do the same thing. Eat as much clock as he can. It would be interesting if they don't convert on third down. What does Matt Brown do? Three minutes to go. Undefeated Wake Forest in trouble. Nothing doing for Chandler. Rondell Bothroy to stop. What a play by Bothroy. You got to kick. You, you, I think yes. you got to go for the three points. You got to take the lead. Now, ooh, the other thing that might happen is does Dave Clawson use one of his three timeouts here? A lot of discussion going on right now. Yeah, I think North Carolina is going to let the play run all the way yeah. down. They can use a timeout, give Mac more time to think about it, too, if he wants to. The problem is they've run two plays and actually lost a yard. This started out second and two, and now they're fourth in the long three. But to your point, if time is more likely to be an issue for Wake Forest. Yeah. But they score so quickly. I don't think Dave Clawson is worried about time with all three timeouts as briskly as they move. What will happen when we come back? Will they go for it on fourth or kick a go-ahead field goal? Five dollars for the best kind. In Chapel Hill, Sean. All right, Kevin Mack proud to send the field goal team out to try to take the lead. 25-yard attempt by Grayson Atkins. Excellent field goal kicker. And right down the middle. So last year, they rallied from 21 down to beat Sam Hartman and Wake Forest. Today, they were down 18, where Matt Brown's Tar Heels, and they've rallied to take the lead again with 2.12 to go. Well, it's been a little bit of everything. So Sam Powell throwing it, a lot of Ty Chandler running it. And some key defensive plays. Cam Kelly with two interceptions. This one setting up the last touchdown as they come storming back behind a powerful running game that's 286 yards now in the ball game. This is the first lead of the football game with that made field goal by the Tar Heels. And you know, Sean, what we're seeing, and Mac Brown loves what he's seeing. We said this at the very beginning. Wake Force is for real. They're a really good team. But this would be the most talented team that they have faced yet this year. And we're seeing that. They've got dudes, man, on offense and defense. North Carolina's got guys. And they have more coming. Another terrific recruiting class for Matt Brown on the way. Seventh lead change of the game. Carolina leads for the first time since the second quarter. Well, they said they want to go from good to great. Have a breakthrough season. Here's the chance to do it. And memorable fashion eight and oh one of only six remaining undefeated teams starting today with georgia michigan state cincinnati oklahoma and utsa they got all three of their timeouts and typically in a two-minute drive like this a scenario like this the first first down is the one you've got to get that's the one that allows you to breathe a little easier getting that first conversion and moving the football Standing field goal kick. Short set by Hartman. Throws for Perry. Can't hang on with Storm Duck in coverage. Tell you what, Storm Duck has made a difference for North Carolina's defense being out there. He's a bigger corner. He's working against the big receiver, Perry. And he's very physical playing that boundary corner. Second and ten. They have not scored here in the fourth quarter. Hartman on the run. Catch made that time by Roberson with just enough for a first down. Well, to me, that makes more sense going the other way. That was going against Conley, the sophomore. He was in coverage on Roberson. He'll probably stay away from Storm Duck in a situation like this. Clock running. 147, all three timeouts left for the Demon Deacons. Here's Roberson again in the slot. 
They are playing way off him. Hartman looks the other way. Another batted pass. This one by Miles Murphy. Well, when you talk about North Carolina having dudes, that, that's what I'm talking about. Miles Murphy, 6'3 and a half, 305 pound sophomore out of Greensboro. Everybody recruited him. Everybody offered him. I mean, he has got a high, high ceiling as a player. They're showing blitz, and they bring it from Hartman's left. Couldn't step into the throw. Nobody in the area. Miscommunication with his receivers. Pressure from Tamon Fox. Yeah, Tamon Fox did a great job running right through Zach Tom, who is the best offensive lineman that Wake Forest has. And Tamon Fox got underneath him and drove him right back into his quarterback's lap. You, you got to think about at least five to seven yards here. You'd love to get ten. But this is two down territory. Obviously, you got to get something positive with this throw. Hartman throws way too high for more, and they had two men covering. Led by Tony Grimes. And now the magical season for Dave Clawson and the Demon Deacons could come down to one play. formation here to the wide side of the field three eligible receivers bunched together and North Carolina is going to call a timeout interesting when well, we out. talked to Jeremiah Gimmel the linebacker Third. terrific charge defensive timeout. player for North Carolina who was disqualified in the first half for targeting about the challenges of facing this complex Wake Forest Offense, what's the biggest challenge? He said those tight punch formations. Yeah. Figure out who's supposed to cover what when they line up close together like that. That was the look that they were given. Well, Mac Brown, his staff wanted more time to talk about how to defend that. They'll probably, you would think now, switch to a different formation and play. Well, they might or they might motion back to it. I do think that's kind of one of their best opportunities is out of that bunch set because you, you have to kind of play soft coverage because you don't know which way those routes are going to mesh and you can't get up and get physical on receivers. So I wouldn't be shocked if they end up in a similar formation, but just maybe get to it a different way. Right now, it looks like more of a two-by-two two formation. Nope, they're going to go three receivers into the boundary with the lone receiver, A.T. Perry, the wide side of the field working on Storm Duck right here. And Duck has kind of had the upper hand of that one-on-one -on -one matchup. A great matchup. Let's see if Wake Forest tries to go in that direction. Hartman's looking that way. He lofts it up for Perry. Incomplete. Ball floated into that breeze. Carolina takes it over on downs. There are flags all over the field. Wake Forest still has three timeouts left. This is not over. And if this goes against Carolina for the celebration at the end of the play, that could be big. Because a field goal would put it away. And they're on the fringe of field goal range at the very least if they take over. Players, an incomplete pass. Ball will go over on downs. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number eight, North Carolina removing the helmet. It's number eight's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. The penalty will be 15 yards. We'll start first and 10. Well, this is perfect coverage by Storm Duck. They gave the big receiver, Perry, the wide side of the field. There's no safety help immediate. Storm Duck in position. The ball a little underthrown, fluttered a little bit. And Jeremiah Gimmel, who had to watch from the sidelines the entire second half, the captain, the leader of this defense. A defense that has had their ups and downs for sure. That was a big moment. Penalty takes them back to the 50. Chandler breaking tackles. What a game for Ty Chandler. Into the end zone for the fourth time.
unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 76 removing the helmet. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. Career high, 213 for Ty Chandler. Surpassing the 198 he had against Virginia earlier this year. And a career high four touchdowns. That one from 50 yards. 336 yards rushing as a team for North Carolina against this Wake Forest defense. The offensive line asserting themselves. Take a look at this last touchdown run. Obviously, Wake Forest has got to gamble a little bit, right? They got to bring linebackers. Watch the right guard and the right tackle just collapse those two blitzers inside and a big hole for Ty Chandler. And then broken tackles of his own. And this guy has had a career day running with strength, running with vision, running with passion. And North Carolina extends their lead. You know, Phil Longo told us, he said, these next four weeks I think are going to be fun because our offense is getting it together. You get a couple turnovers and interceptions from your defense. And North Carolina is not done yet. In shades of last year. Yeah. When they scored 35 unanswered points. One point down by 21. Came back to win that one 59-53. Mac Brown's team has outscored Wake 24 to nothing here in the fourth quarter. Wake had an 18-point lead with just under five to go in the third quarter. Wake Forest, because of the penalty, is going to get the ball with excellent field position. Blake Whitehart recovered the kick. And they still have three timeouts, a minute seven. Mac Brown will not be pleased with some of these celebration penalties. They're fortunate that Chandler's run wiped out the negative of the celebration after the, inter the takeover on downs. I think both of these teams feel the same way, and you said it. Their offenses are so good. They just say to these, but just get us a just few a stops, stops at the right time. Just get a couple stops. That's right. And they did today. That stop, the two. Interceptions by Kelly, huge for the North Carolina defense. Hartman down the middle. Roberson down at the 20. Good protection. Deep dig route. Again, North Carolina going to try to keep everything in front. But that was a lot of yardage to give up on a first down. Sure it was 26 yards. Clock stopped for a moment to move the chains. They're throwing them more and they're grabbing them. Incomplete. With Storm Duck in coverage, the coaches said yesterday, if he's healthy, he is a difference maker. Well, yeah. That's proven to be very true here today. Well, they think he's the best cover corner guy in the league, in the ACC. Of course, he's got a heck of a coach in Dre Bly, and on that last possession, when they turned him over on down, Dre Bly made a, a sprint all the way to the end zone to celebrate with his corner. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. Hartman. Running out of time. Sam Hartman runs, gets thrown down by Fox at the 14. Dave Clawson will use his first timeout. Yep. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean updating you. Upset brewing, of course, in Chapel Hill. Right now, how about this at Purdue? Their favored Michigan State, number three in the land. And Aiden O'Connell, uh, David Bell, and the Boilermakers on the board first. Currently, this game on ESPNU. Back to you. All right, Kevin. Dave Clawson. Trying to do something to get a quick score, keep hope alive. Hartman's had a rough fourth quarter. Just three out of 12. Still is thrown for 384 for the day and four touchdowns. But he'll beat himself up about those two interceptions, particularly the second, which led directly to the game-tying score. Cameron Kelly, the two picks today that were huge for North Carolina. So it's third down and three. You expect with so little time, you, know, you can't be concerned about getting the first down. You got to throw the ball no, in the end zone again, don't you? Yeah, you do. 
I mean, the clock will stop again momentarily if you convert a first down, but you got to score as quick as possible. Hartman fake to Dallas, and Hartman throws, and it's caught for a touchdown by Roberson. Looked like he might have gotten away with a little shove to get free as the ball was on the way. 14 yards and a touchdown. Well, Roberson is the guy I think you need to work. He's got inside coverage by the safety, Conley, and the other safety, Morrison, not able to get over the top to help in time. That's a beautiful throw by Sam Hartman. Roberson's second touchdown. He's over 100 yards receiving, 111 on seven catches. Extra point good. So it is a three-point game with 37 seconds to go and an onside kick upcoming. We talked with Dave Clawson yesterday. We asked him, how have your special teams been? He said, excellent. I think we're one of the one or two best in the country when you look at some of the metrics and places like ESPN that grade out special teams. Here's the chance for a, a yeah. big special teams play. They need an onside kick recovery. Yeah, probably the lowest percentage play that there is in football, the onside kick recovery. But uh, they've got a chance. You know, they, they got that quick score, so they got a chance at it. And uh, it's been the kind of game we expected, right? We, we knew... This was going to be a high-scoring game, an offensive-minded game. Which defense could come up with a couple stops or turnovers? And it's been fun to watch and fun to call. The last year, 112 total points, 59-53. Yeah. We talked about all day the similarities between last year's game and this one. This year, 113 points. <laughs> one more than last year. And for the second year in a row, a huge comeback by North Carolina. Hartman responsible for five touchdowns, throwing and two rushing. That's seven total. Single season Wake Forest, a single game Wake Forest record, and the record against North Carolina by any opponent. Skiba has it teed up. Onside kick. It goes out of bounds. Well, that was done intentionally. You know, that was Garrett Walston, the graduate senior tight end, who's on the hands team that just smartly knocked it out of bounds. Well, Skiba kicked a little too hard. They're hoping for the big hop there and somebody to run under it. You said alert play by Walston. Yeah. Looks like he played a little volleyball in his, uh, in his past high school life. Yep, they've coached them up on that a few times. So now all they have to do is take a knee. Which is Lake Forest can only stop it twice. And they will. And hope that somehow North Carolina has a miscue on an exchange. Well, if they want to go from good to great. That's their motto. And for so much of the day today, it looked like they would. Yeah. Hard to explain how it unraveled, especially how all of a sudden the offense completely disappeared. Losing yeah. Christian Beal Smith hurt a little bit. Right. You know, he's basically part of the interchangeable situation at running back. You know, part of it is, too, when we talked to defensive coordinator Lyle Hemphill, we asked him, you know, describe the season for your defense. He said, wildly inconsistent. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's kind of what this was. You know, there, there were moments when Wake Forest was playing some good defense, especially the, the situational aspects. And then all of a sudden, they could not stop the run at all. They could had no answer for Ty Chandler. And the things they don't do that are part of their right. formula. Penalties, 11 of them today for 119. Turnovers, two, but both led to a touchdown right. for North Carolina. Here's Kevin Nagandi. John, here comes the Spartans in their offense. Peyton Thorne to Trey Mosley. Again, down 7 nothing. has some time. Steps up. Finds Picks time, up. direct now, traffic. Beautiful Diving strike. They're tied at seven apiece over on ESPNU. Back to you. We're here on ABC shortly, as soon as we finish. And Carolina snaps it one more time. So the perfect season is out the window for Wake Forest. They've never been 8-0. They still have not been 9-0, and it won't happen this year. 
but they're still in great shape in the ACC. Bear in mind, this was not a conference game, even though they're conference opponents. So they are still in control of their division, the Atlantic Division, in the ACC. They storm the field here at Keenan Stadium. Final score, North Carolina 58, Wake Forest 55. For Tom Blackledge, Molly McGrath, and our great crew, led by Josh Hoffman and Scott Johnson, we'll send you to Purdue for Michigan State and Purdue.